fasten your seatbelt. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Hey, I just want to put a disclaimer on today's show a little bit. If you hear my air conditioner going on in the back, it's because I live in a New York City apartment. And there's always that, that like week or two at the end of the winter where the fucking super still has the radiator heat going on. So it's fucking 60 degrees out and the fucking heat is blasting in here. So I have to I have to have the air conditioner on to sort of create some sort of balance here. So you got the radiator that's hissing away and the air conditioner that's that's being noisy. What's up, Mick? How are you, buddy? Look, the gang's all here. What's up? What's up, Victoria? Yeah, we're gonna have a good show today. I'll tell you that. Yeah, right. I li- yo, I live in a New York City apartment, like it's a pre-war building. There could be like a nuclear holocaust outside and like you wouldn't even know shit. Like when Hurricane Sandy came, it was like, oh, it's raining out. Like, ugh. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Our guest rescheduled. Yeah, that was cool. Yep. Absa- absa- absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, RS. Respects to everyone that knows about that radiator shit. Yeah. Fuck. Did you did you hear you're playing with did I hear we're playing with biohazard? We're playing with biohazard? Is that right? <laughs> oh yeah. We'll talk about that, man. Yes, it's true. We'll talk about that. Yep, it's going down. Big show in New York City. It's going down. You know? Oh, you got the... That was fast, bro. You got the record I sent you? That was fast. Do you... Is, are you joking? It's It's been announced. Here. You know what? Here, for all those that may not know, it was announced, what, three hours ago. If you're wondering about who else is on the biohazard bill, it's... It is Biohazard, Sheer Terror, Sworn Enemy, Fury of Five, Sub-Zero, and Incendiary Motherfucking Device. That's what's up. Uh, Matinee, June 18th. That's what's up. That's who else is on the Biohazard bill. Speaking of which. Uh Aha. What do you? Oh. Listen, bro, don't even try it. Don't even try to suck up to me, bro, because let me tell you something. Hey, let I put t- the shirt on before I even knew about the the, uh, the uh, announcement. Bro, my band's blowing up. And when my band blows up, I'm going to be the biggest dick out there. I'm going to be like, you think you think Noel Gallagher is you, you, you think <laughs> what, what, no, Liam? You think Liam Gallagher is a dick? Forget it, bro. I'm going to be like the biggest dick. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. Good. Get with yeah, the see that it was it was it was meant to, it was it was meant to be that I took this off the top of the laundry basket this morning. Had I yeah. not done this, that announcement wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Nah, that's awesome. That's a crazy that's I'll tell you something. That's a crazy way to spend Father's Day. You know? Yeah. Bring bring your dad. Bring your dads to that one. Yeah, it's so well, you know what? I guess you could they could call this dad rock. Yeah. Uh, hey, it, be- listen. L- listen, everybody. The doors are at four and we're on at four thirty. And then you could just go the fuck home. <laughs> <laughs> don't be don't be late. Yeah, don't be late. Don't be late. See, don't be fashionably late for this one. You know? It's gonna be nuts. I can't wait. This is gonna be awesome. I like what Lori Dawn said about it. she said, I'm gonna be cowering by the exit door. That's right. That's right. I'm psyched to see Fury of Five again. Hell yeah. That's going to be fun. This is, I mean, this is, this is a killer right here. It's a good one. Ray Hogan, what's up? So, um, what? Oh, uh, are you going to be playing any other, by any other? I can't talk about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at liberty to talk about that. It's a need to know basis only. 
But there's definitely a lot of biohazard shit in the cooker, man. You know? Oh, yeah. There's definitely a lot going on, man. Well, who do they got for the, the first night is with uh, Indecision and um, King Nine is the, uh, for the, the Friday show. Yeah. So, yep. pretty cool. Going to be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, Joe, ha Joe, Joe Halleck. Broke my nose at Biohazard Hate Breed Agnostic Front Cricket <laughs> Club, Irvington, New Jersey. Oh um, man, what's up, Chucky? How you doing? All right, let's do let's do photo of the day, huh? Let's do it. Here you go. Boom. Nice SG. Yeah. Whoever, whoever it is. Nice Classic. SG. I always yeah. love the SG. I always love the, the the red Tony Iommi, Angus Young. So many yeah. people. Absolutely. Anybody have any idea who this might be? I'll be impressed. I know I'm going deep on this one. Yeah. Anybody? Is it? Ha! <laughs> Gee. <laughs> All right. Um, is it? Come on now. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, don't, don't do the one with the drum head yet. Yeah, I don't want to put this one up because <laughs> it's got the band's name on it, right? <laughs> yeah. Is it Machine Head? Good good call. Is it is it Dave Mustaine? Is it Flyleaf? I don't know. Oh, I remember Flyleaf as a girl singer. Hmm. This is a really good band, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, it's a really good band. If not very uh like Sabathian kind of heavy. Three eleven. Huh. I bet you listened to three eleven back in the day. I like some three eleven. I like I like a little bit of three eleven. I got no beef with them. Hey, somebody wanna straighten Ken uh uh Buglioni out down there? Uh, uh, is this? Are you familiar with the format here, bro? Or are you just trying to blow up the spot? Here's another one. We're trying to kill some time here, Ken. If it's okay with you, <laughs> um, is it the Vatican Commando? Speaking of which, yeah. Speaking hey, of which, yeah. dude is on the show on Sunday. Watch his film. Is it Queen? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. You would think you would think it's the Black Crows, right? You you would you would you would think that, right? This is a band that has played and toured with uh, Machine Head and Metallica and things like that. All right, let's 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 spill let's spill the beans. Okay? There you go. There you let's, go. Let, let's just spill the beans. So there you go. Is it <laughs> the Vatican Commandos? Is it Queen? Is it the Black Crows? Is it Moby Good Guy? Is it Garth? Ah, Brooklyn Jason. Is it Sword? <laughs> <laughs> it's Is the it Sword. <laughs> the Sword. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is it Sword? Sword. All right, lay it on us. It is the sword. This is the sword. Uh, this is from 2006 at the Starland Ballroom. This was actually a uh, it, that particular show was Sword and Clutch, and uh, these guys, you know, old school kind of 70s heavy vibe, a uh, bunch of records, and uh, you know, I've seen them a number of times. I saw them with Machine Head. I saw them with Metallica. Um, Really cool, really cool style stuff. And, uh, you know, I figured I, with Phil coming on the show, I would go with something in that vein. And uh, I guess we didn't have any takers on this one. Yeah. But really, really good band. You know, I'm doing the London 1977 book. And there's a band from, and this is dated... 19, this is dated 
December 13th, de- December 3rd, 1977. And it's a band called The Sword. And the dude, oh, okay. look, the dude is even wearing a shirt that says The Sword. Oh, that's funny. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering, they kind of look like maybe it's the same band. Ah, uh, no way. <laughs> but maybe it's something like Highlander or something. Like they're like, it's, you know it's like, it it's like they, they have, they're like, they, they never age. It's, it's like, <laughs> um, what was that movie? They, oh, um, Benjamin, Benjamin Button. They yeah, they never first. age. Like they, they just continuously play like throughout eons of time. And here they are in 1977 when they were kind of like a punk band, you know, like, so they just, they just perpetually exist like playing and partying and, and getting laid, you know, it's not a bad life. It's just an eternal life of getting laid, snorting shitty blow, and, and like <laughs> drinking Paps Blue Ribbon. <laughs> wow, that guy looks like he should be working in an office somewhere. Yes, Ken, it's a joke, bro. <laughs> Come on, listen, Ken. Help me help you, dude. There's humor. Let me let me talk to Ken a second. Uh-oh. There's humor on the show, Ken. Ha 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 ha. Jesus, man. Where are these guys coming from all of a sudden? <laughs> well, we got a good guest. People are eager, you know? None of the, none of the bits are going over good today. <laughs> you know? Jesus Christ. He's coming right. on soon, too. See, see, John in, Lo- John in London gets it. It's fucking comedy gold. <laughs> you know? Christ almighty. Oh, man. Hey. As if you didn't already know, I'm going to let you know one more time. Lori Dawn is going to be cowering by the exit, she said, because, yes, on June 18th, Biohazard is the big matinee. Biohazard, Sheer Terror, Sworn Enemy, Fury of Five, Sub-Zero, and Incendiary Device. Tickets are on. Wait, someone just put up that. Yeah, there's that ticket link. It's in the, uh, it's in the chat room. Buy a ticket. Listen, this is what you should do. Buy a ticket, come see us play, and then split. We play first. <laughs> Fucking 20 minutes. Listen, who the fuck could stand around for six, 300 bands like that? What is this, like, what is this, the fucking, like, the, 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 Di- the, the Dynamo Festival? Didn't you do the Dynamo Festival with Biohazard? A long time ago. You did. Yeah. Paulie Porkchop says, I saw Biohazard 25 times. Between 1989 and 1996, bro, I saw Biohazard. <laughs> tw- I saw Biohazard 25 times in a month. That's why I'm fucking brain damaged at this point. 25 times in a fucking month, yo. Thank you, Chucky. Anyway, <laughs> hey, listen, get, get back to where. Any, what's? Pick me something random off the shelf. I need something. Pick, pick me a winner. All right, will you? You know what? You, you know, I got, I got something for you. How about, how about? Some pure nickel special. If you got to oh. grease up your locks, you got to lube up your locks. You put this stuff in the locks. Can and you they can you huff? Can you huff that? <laughs> I hope like if not. you put if you put it in a bandana. Can you huff it? May cause skin and eye irritation. No, you may. don't want to huff that. It may or it may not. You All have right. to try for yourself. All right, get all right. Glad you're getting paid. To, I'm glad you're getting paid. I'm glad someone's paying you to be on the show. Listen, you know, I, I like to bring the railroad to you. That's what I like to do. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. Well, there it is. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. And we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, the organic New York Hardcore Comics, the organic grill, the Texas Silver Rush, DTF and Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, Upstate Records, and 126 Hardcore Clothing. They're a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They're about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Don't care what you may say, we got that attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game at www.126clothing.com. Come on now, the Texas Silver Rush. 
The Texas Silver Rush is a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and, believe it or not, social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers Greg Rollet, Ringo Starr, who, by the way, used to play in a band called The Beatles. And, of course, Agnostic Front, as if you didn't know who Ringo Starr is. How many people, show of hands, how many people know who the fuck Ringo Starr is? Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and, of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. That said, let's clear the deck. Let's bring our guest on. Um, let me clear it all, clear it out, clear it all, clear it out. Everybody's behaving themselves. Here we go. Today's guest is an American guitarist and songwriter, Halen, from the Sunshine State of California. He is known for his work with the bands Torque, Metal Allegiance, BPMD, Machine Head, and of course, Violets. Please welcome, coming at us from Dublin, California, the journeyman, Mr. Phil Demel. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> oh, what's up, man? Quite an intro. Hey, you, you deserve it, man. I got this huge glare on my glasses. See if I can do this without. Ah! Whoa, there he is. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wear contacts when I do this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You 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 handled you got your kid to school and all that? You yeah, know? I mean it's spring break for them. I had one that uh my 16-year-old had uh his his yearly checkup. So it, it's I had to get him in and the you know, I I I deal in such small windows of time that mm. everything is booked back to back to back. So leading up, I really want to apologize for you know blowing it the last time we had something scheduled and I just really dropped the ball and and uh, so it's glad we were able to connect here and make it happen. Yeah, it was very honorable of you to, to circle back. And, and, and uh, we, we appreciate it. We, we really do. Right on. Uh, 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 just to start, at, where's Dublin, California? Dublin. Okay. So uh, <laughs> there's the San Francisco Bay Area. I don't uh, like to do this with because it's backwards or whatever, but uh, we're directly east from Oakland, about 15 miles, nestled in a little valley. So if you've ever driven up here and you go past and you see all the windmills happening before you drop down off the yeah. front, that's, you know, right, right where Dublin is. Is that, is that near where the Alt Altamont racetrack was? Yeah. Right. Right. I pass that like 10 miles past yeah. that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You drop into the valley and that's Dublin. I just have that like in my mind's eye, like going through the, going through the, the mountains there on, on the highway. And it's like, that's where Altamont was. Like, yeah, oh. but, uh, yeah. Give me shelter the whole road. Yeah. Oh boy. Cool deal. Yeah. Pretty crazy. <laughs> my uncle owned land back there and he paid, he, he made people pay like 10 bucks to park on his land or whatever. Is that right? So yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, that, that, that speedway's not there anymore, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's still there. It is. It's still there. Yeah. You go, you go on the 580 just before you get to the, uh, the turnoff for the five, you look up wow. and it's really still the speedway. Wow great so let's uh let's chop it up a little bit let's have some fun um how did you come up uh did you grow up in a musical household how did music come into your life i did my mom was uh she was in she sang in the choir and uh she was in a folk trio oh wow trio. yeah i think no i think they were a quartet there was yeah there was four of them so um but she sang in this folk quartet and uh, i would watch them play she always there was always a piano her and my her and her sister my aunt were uh were on the radio let me turn off my this rig is making some noise here <laughs> doing some recording mm. sorry bud okay and so they were on the radio as kids you know the garcia sisters and so uh she um, Always had music going on. There was always like a stereo, but there were, it was all, I, you know, this was the early 70s. So it's like, you know, Engelbert Humperdinck and, you know, all the Burt Bacharach. And when, when, you, when, you, when you say the folk thing and you grew up, I'm assuming the folk thing and you and having grown up in the Bay Area, that conjures up a lot of sort of that whole, you know, all that Grateful Dead and, 
Uh, it, 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 no, no. My parents a little older than that. You know, they weren't okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it was more. It was more gospel, and it was more. Okay. okay. You know, they were watching. Uh, what was the old show the Lawrence Walk show? And, oh, sure. You know, so it was. It was pretty old. I I got most of my my hard rock introductions by my next my uh, my aunt lived next door, so my cousin Ron was about three or four years older, so he had. You know, and so we're talking mid seventies here. So he he had the Fog Hat records, he had the Kiss records. You know, mm -hmm. he had Ted Nugent, he had Journey, he had all these. You know, Aerosmith, and so that's what I was getting drawn towards. And so he was my source of, hey, you got any? You know, you got any Judas Priest or anything like that? So he was he was more into that the hard rock those bands that I just named, but. Getting seeing that Kiss Alive record was the one was like oh crap you know an, another an, an, another another guy with the with, with the Kiss oh, there it is. is it on this one it's, 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 there it's, it is it's, it's, <laughs> amazing amazing we talk about this on the show it's like you know Kiss is just the gateway it's yes. it's, it's the gateway drug it's the gateway it it's, the, it's the gateway music. To, yeah, to, you see, you know, I'm I'm seeing Gene Simmons spit fire and and blood, yeah. and it's just like, wow, I I didn't know what I wanted to play yet, but I knew I wanted to be in a band and perform in that sense. And so. and, and so so it was so it was the, the the heavy the heavier stuff spoke to you early on. What was what was uh, the first uh, like sort of heavy show that you went to? I wasn't allowed to go to shows until I was in high school. So mm -hmm. uh, after I got out of eighth grade that summer. There was a show, it's 1981, and uh, Bill Graham put on these shows here, big local promoter, yeah, well, I mean, world not famous, but they were called Day on the Green, and they would have, uh, yeah, oh my God, that's it. <laughs> you, know, you did it. <laughs> so, Go on. Go you know, on. somewhere, so uh, he, would, he would put all these bands together, at, you know, Zeppelin, ACDC, Mahogany Rush, you know, all these Journey, all these, all these huge bands would play these shows together. And so this was my first show, uh, 4th of July, 1981. Uh, Hart was headlining, Gloucester Colt was playing, uh, Lover Boy, Pat Travers. And then at 10 a.m., you know, you Ozzy go. Osbourne. There, there you go. There it is. There it is right there. At 10 a.m., Ozzy Osbourne is going on. And, at 10 a.m.? Uh, yeah, we had the record. We got there at five in the morning because we wanted to get as close as we could. Wow! And uh, it was it was awesome. You know, you're standing in line and everybody's smoking pot, and you know, it's just my first experience with all of that. So, I did. Big, I did. I did. Fan. So that was a that was such a good moment for me. I did. I did. When I when I was doing my homework here, I was like four one five. I'm like I, I, I'm like I, I looked I looked that up. It was it's. It's Eric Martin who later turned up in Mr. Big, but yeah. it's really I read their history. I mean, they, they were like local heroes. That yeah. man, they, they really put in work. They they did a, you know, he was around for years before Mr. Brit before Mr. Big uh, made it. You know. Yes. Yeah, so the drummer of that band, and he was in. Uh, they were called the Eric Martin Band too, mm -hmm. and uh, so the drummer for Four One Five was uh, Troy Lakeda, who's my cousin. No and, shit. Yeah. So, and he would be, he would leave Eric Martin later on and, and be, and found, co found Tesla. Is that right? You're, yeah. you're straight up your cousin. It's my Not second you. cousin. It's my you're mom sick. and his mom are cousins. So he's my right. second cousin. Wow. And I didn't even meet him until like 2007. He was always uh, local guys, uh, Zet, who sings for the band Exodus. Right. He's from Dublin. Chuck Billy's from Dublin. Right. Um, but Zet lived on the same street as Troy. So he, you know, he knew Troy really well. And I, you know, he's like, he's my cousin. I've never, you know, really even met him. Man, I'm just looking at fucking Randy Rose's pedal board, man. Yeah. Crazy, right? What the fuck is that? He's He had that thing specially made. And uh, so I think he's got like an old school Echoplex to the left of it. That, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, but and and then of course he's got those high heels on the wall right there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he was tiny dude, man. Yeah, yeah. Tiny wow. dude. Uh, 
it looks like it looks like a total handmade pedal board you know yeah it was it was like a custom deal like yeah and, uh, i think ozzy called it like the the chip pan like because it, it made so much sizzling you know there's so much noise coming from it always a problem yeah wow and that's rudy sarzo on the right too yeah yeah i is that, done is that yeah go ahead I've done uh, a bunch of the jam stuff with Rudy and I even did a, like a Randy Rhodes remember tour with him. And uh, it, was, it was one of the coolest things. And one of the most grounding moments in my career, I think was like sitting in a, in a van, like traveling from show to show with Rudy Sarzo. That's awesome. Know, That's awesome. Sitting in a van, him just noodling on the bass the whole time. Randy's uh, sister and brother were on that tour. So I'm sitting in the van with, with both those guys. Wow. And just, telling Rudy my story about this show and my experience. And he remembers everything, man. He yeah. remembers what hotel they stayed at and, you know, getting that account straight from the dude who was there. He was on the bus when it, it got hit, you know, so it was, you know, it's, a, so it's cool. always amazing when people have that, that sort of that recall, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I do not. I so, think I have more like, memories from like the two first violence tours that we did in 88 yeah. than I do of most of my touring and machine sure. you know, seen years of touring with machine. Head. I remember those first two tours almost vividly. Well, I, I think, I think that's human nature, right? It's like when you're out there the first time, the first couple of times and you're young and it's exciting and it's an adventure yeah. and then you settle into it and it's like, you're kind of going to, the, you know, at, at a certain point, that I don't want to say it's become routine, but you know, it's, it's not routine, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're punching the clock sometimes and depending on the environment, you know, yeah, yeah. it is. You're like morning, Ralph, morning, Sam. Sure. So, so that was 81. Did you form your first band? What was your first band? What, what, how did things come up? How did things sort of lead into violence? Uh, which I know you guys put together, in, in, in around 85 how yeah. did things ramp up to that so i started jamming with other people in high school my freshman year and uh we we form a band and i'm instantly writing lyrics you know and at 15 years old and you know <laughs> writing music writing original lyrics and and uh for my band that we uh we call ourselves on parole after the uh the motorhead record nice. and so we're on parole and we're doing we're doing some covers. We're doing some Maiden. We love we love the Maiden in the early eighties, you know, and doing sure. some Priest. And uh, we get my buddy John Souza, older guy, he's like four years older than us. He's driving. We're barely driving at this point, and uh, to play bass for us. And he's like local local dude, kind of. He's corrupting all of us into, into the ways of like, you know, we do it. He, he, he's the guy who gives me my first line of blow. You know, he's the guy that, you know, he's just like introducing us to, to all the uh, more adult type stuff. And he has a brother. His name's Steve Souza. He's all going to get my brother to sing for us, you know, and, and it's Zet from Exodus. You know, we were the wow. first band that he sang for. And uh, so we're, we're playing starting to play some local clubs and starting to, you know, we changed our name to metal warrior because it's tougher, you know, so we're now metal warrior. And, and, uh, we play, we play some clubs and, and we're getting to, you know, I'm, I'm honing, honing my, my skills and, and some of the dudes aren't into the heavier music and they kind of start to fall off. And, uh, they're actually guys that I play with still in my covers band called the Merkin. So there's all my high school buddies from back then are still guys that I jam locally with now. Playing the same covers, you know, the same priest and ACDC covers. <laughs> so Zet quits and he joins a local band called Legacy, mm -hmm. uh, who become Testament. And so I'm in my senior year of high school at this point, and I get approached by uh, the guys in a band called Death Penalty. Mm. We're looking for a guitar player. And I loved, you know, I saw Slayer's first show ever out of, you know, SoCal. They played North northern california they opened for a band called laws rocket that i was sure. working to and i saw slayer and i was like what the fuck is this mm. you know this is they came out to the theme <laughs> halloween and they played we're playing so fast and i hadn't really heard a metal band play that fast before you know and so i was instantly hooked into that these guys were looking for a guitar player they were you know uh eddie or chuck billy from testament's brother was the bass player mm. 
and uh, so they are they were going the metal direction. That's the way I wanted to go. Uh, they're called Death Penalty. We just start writing. I come in, start writing tunes and lyrics, and start you know. Uh, we start getting some shows that change the name to violence and you know we're off we're we're opening for legacy and we're opening in this whole east bay bay area scene that's happening with all these you know well that that's what i was gonna you know ray hogan asks did you sense something special was brewing in the bay area yeah i mean well we just figured it was like that all over the place yeah like, yeah. We don't know. We don't, you know, I'm, yeah, barely, yeah. I'm barely getting out to San Francisco, which is 40 miles away. <laughs> There's no internet at this point, you know? Right, right. So we're like, you know, we're, we're seeing what's happening with this music. My buddy Dave introduced me to Exodus and you can, so, you know, of course, Metallica's around. Uh, Slayer had come up. Local bands like Death Angel and Possessed are, are drawn mm -hmm. really well. And of course, Legacy's starting to blow up and um, we're getting our chances and different clubs are popping up and, and, uh, so we're opening for more nationals as they come through too. So as you could go see shows five nights a week and it didn't matter who was playing because people were just, Hey, there's a show we're going to go out and support. It was a really, sure. really good scene. So did, what was, was did I know this might be a little was Rob Schwinn in the band right away or did he come in a little later? No, he was in 87. It was, uh, uh, that picture. It was me and Perry, the drummer kneeling down in the acid wash jeans. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It was, it was him and I right out of high school. And then, uh, Eddie Billy was playing bass. We ended up getting Dean, uh, pretty early. That was in, you know, Dean came along pretty early. Sean, and then uh, we got Rob in 87. So the, this band was together pretty much. Um, I had written the first record, except for one song that Rob had brought in. But the record was pretty much already done. We had already started gaining traction in the area. Uh, Rob and, and us had a mutual. Yeah, that was Lamores by Eddie Malik. Is that right? Picture. Wow. You know, Eddie Malik, isn't he from... I don't know Eddie Eddie Malik. Yeah, he was he would always be at the New York shows, but that was opening for Testament. Gotcha. So uh yeah, that was the the bulk of the the violence early stuff was those five guys there. And and uh, I guess uh, just doing some homework, uh, the the is it the big six of the Bay Area of Bay Area thrash metal, Exodus, Testament, Death Angel, La Laz Rocket, Forbidden, and you guys. Sure. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Right? I, would, I mean, we were the ones that were probably drawing the most, that we were right. the, the headlining bands. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would I would I would say that Laz Rocket kind of fell off as the, they were kind of a tweener. They were always they were a metal band, but they weren't quite thrash. They had heavy ele elements, but they they kind of had more of an image. Yeah, but I mean, they're, they're a band that that like I they didn't sort of make it over to the East Coast. Uh, right, it, it translates to the East Coast really the way yeah. a lot of the other bands, a way the other a lot of the way a lot of the other bands did. Now back then, and 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 I was just kind of going, you guys. I was thinking about the process. You guys had to. You guys did a couple of demos before you got signed and like that's what you did back then you you, you do a demo you do another demo you, you <laughs> demo you demo you know you make cassettes and then and then eventually um this came out it was it it was at mechanic records yeah that was the that was the first record yeah yeah mm -hmm. mechanic put it out we did we did a demo we, we recorded at prairie sun studios where a lot of the locals exodus did their first record there the uh, test legacy did their demo there a lot of a lot of shrapnel was done uh varney is ron varney super shredder label shrapnel records like i think the, the ingway the steeler record was on that you know tony mcalpine all those bands uh jason sure. Baker, super shredder label they he was based from that studio so we did our demo there and i did all the mailing and did all the you know the tape trading and sent out a bunch of those and that led to Mechanic Records putting this out. Did they, was it just, was there a relationship or was it just? Mike Martin, thank you, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Mike Varney, right. Gotcha. Thank you, Ray. Um, and here's the back of it, right? There you go. Yeah. Kind of, a great, kind of a great, kind of a great back cover for the record, man. It was Mark Lealoa took those. He's uh, he took some great shots for us. Were you were you happy with this? What was was there uh, 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 in retrospect? I mean, looking back on it, uh, happy with this? I, I know it actually cracked the Billboard 200, right? It did. It did. I think that we we peaked at like 150 or something like that. But do you that's, even but, have but that? That's all, that's awesome. Yeah, it was it was awesome. It was really cool. I was super stoked with the record and and uh you know, they took a song off called Torture Tactics because of the lyrical content was which was kind of a bummer. That's why there's only seven songs on there. Right. But that was, you know, we were getting a big push from the label and uh living the living the dream, man. We went down to record in uh in Hollywood and and was was uh we were feeling really important at that time. So yeah. Was, that's ex was, uh, that's exciting. That's exciting for a young person, you know. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, to be to be a, you know sort of a part of the 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 the, the, the culture, you know. Uh, is that right, Mike? Yo, what? What's up, Gitter? The brother of what's up, Mike Gitter? <laughs> Mark, who was the brother of comics legend Steve Leola? Hi, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Huh? Who did the album cover? Uh, this is Ed Repka, who is oh doing, wow, of course yeah, he was doing everybody back in the day. Of course, Ed Repka lives. Ed Repka lives in Jersey now. We, we he he we constantly see him because we go to this thing that the the Chiller Con, the Chiller Convention that they have in. in oh yeah, okay. Yo, know, Ed Ed's at every one because I guess he I guess he's friends with the guy that puts it on. He's always there, Ed Repka. Right. You know. Um, yeah. So, so we actually. Uh, went back maybe about 10 years ago and uh bought the rights the original five guys on the record bought the rights to uh that so we uh we own the rights to it that's that's great um this the, the next one um i had to I, I i grabbed this which i thought was appropriate the cassette oh, you shit. know just because <laughs> just because you know and and uh uh, Megaforce Atlantic, which is exciting. Could you tell us how 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 did you guys sort of how did things ramp up to Megaforce Atlantic? So the deal with Mechanic uh, and Steve Sinclair, um, he had some kind of crazy ideas on how to market the band, and and uh, kind of conflicted with with our own, and we couldn't seem to find some middle ground. He agreed to give us our release, uh, Maria Ferraro was at uh was at megaforce and our management at the time debbie bono they were really tight friends she believed in the band uh we wanted to be on megaforce they had all the big bands at the time and knew what to do with them and uh so we we went that direction and again the song Tor torture tactics <laughs> gets pulled from yeah. from the record even after submitting our lyrics to everybody we had them recorded we had alternate lyrics set to had to go and they uh they obviously didn't go through the right chain of commands because they wanted to uh to pull the song so that's what happened uh gary gary uh Olford says this is worth a fortune on vinyl in europe only pressed in germany really hey. Hey. we've uh we've looked into you know approached atlantic they don't they don't want to give up the rights. They don't want to put it out. Nothing is happening with this record. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's a Will Wilson's asking any chance to get oppress oppressing the masses reissued in the future and I guess you're addressing that, right? Yeah, they're just they're not interested and we can't, you know. It, there's funny. not a lot of money in, you know, violence <laughs> recording, so it's yeah. like it's more of a right. novelty thing for us to be able to have it out and yeah, and be able to get it. So it's it's uh they don't care, so what are you gonna do? Yeah. Um, any any uh, Johnny Z? Any any Johnny Z experience? Uh, yeah, you know, I I really didn't. I mean, Johnny was. Uh, um, I don't know if he really cared about the band so much. I, hmm. I don't think that he liked Sean as a vocalist. I think that he really on our second Megaforce record, nothing to gain. He really tried to come in and change a lot of uh direction and have all these ideas and 
um, we made some changes. It wasn't enough. And, and I don't want to speak too ill of, you know, the sure. man who's no longer with us. It just wasn't a, uh, we, we didn't have a close relationship and, Ooh. You know, he ended up just shelving the band. So not much to say about Johnny Z. Yeah, you probably, I guess, by that time, you kind of got on that roster and he had a lot of bands. He was shuffling around and there was a lot going on. And he wasn't yeah, it was that. Three, it was Alice in Chains. It was Soundgarden. It was, you know, yeah. it was, we were, the. if you listen to the record, you will, uh, <laughs> it's not the same as as the first record at all. I mean, there's some there's some good moments on it, but you know that that album as a whole is is uh, one that I don't listen to. Sure, sure. So so the hand so the violence hand plays out. Did you guys you know in that era? Did you guys uh, do a lot of touring? Did you make it to Europe? Anything that really? No, we did. Uh, we did a. Tour with Testament right when the record came out, which was awesome. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we went back and did the States again with Voivod, which wasn't as awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we right. figured, hey, we're coming back to these these same venues. We just played right. here. We killed it. We're going to be awesome. And then there was like 25% of what Testament was doing. And then, uh, then that was it for that record. Two, two States tours because we left the label. We got on Megaforce. We put out a pressing. Uh, we fire our management, Debbie Bono, who was loved by everybody in the business. And uh, our booking agent drops us. You know, the label isn't happy with us. Uh, so we do one headlining tour on a pressing, never make it to Europe, and then that's it. So two records, three states tours, and that's it. Yeah. And and how does how does the hand play out in the end? Uh, what, wasn't there wasn't there uh, nothing to gain? Yeah, so nothing to gain was the second record that I was talking about with uh, Megaforce. Okay, and that never comes out. Uh, it gets shelved. We're just sitting around. Uh, Rob is like Rob. <laughs> Rob needs to be playing guitar. He needs to be doing something. So Rob is putting together Machine Head. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he approaches us about doing both. We say no. Um, he quits or is let go, or I don't even know what, what to say. I, I, I think head, heads or tails, right? Yeah, it's, it doesn't matter. He's no longer yeah. with us. Uh, and so we continue to play for a little bit. Perry, the drummer, has connected with uh, Billy Milano and Bobby Gustafson, and they're going to do something. So Perry quits and we, uh, we just kind of ride that dead. <laughs> we just beat that yeah. dead horse right to the ground. You know, nobody cares anymore. It's just like, you know, the slower groovy stuff's coming in. And yeah, yeah. It was, it, 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 you got to put emphasis on the era that it was. It yeah. was like, you know, I, I was, I was in a hard rock band, you know, in 92 as well. And things were shifting. Yes, you know, there was a, there was a big shift going on. It was weird, you know, and we were a straight up thrash band. There's no dynamic yeah. to what we did, and <laughs> you know, I mean, it was '94. Vulgar came out, and you know, it's like the groove and everything was kind of yeah. happening at that point. And you know, Biohazard's rolling at that point, super yeah. grooving, and sure. um, so it was just <clears throat> Sean the singer quit, and at that point, we uh, we became torque and i started singing <laughs> yeah we tuned there you go started, started being groovy that's it that's it yeah so ray in the back uh with a disassociated look looking at that's we replaced rob and violence so this is basically violence without sean so it's <laughs> like so it's like from the ashes of violence comes right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean we didn't even change it's like the same suit we just took out you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we didn't even turn off the fire. It was just still. There's no ashes. We're just, and it was fun, man. And we we did pretty well in the in the East Bay for what was happening at that time, and uh, put a record out. And it was cool to have a record out with me singing on it. And uh, got to go play the Dynamo Festival in '96. So that was people, fun. People love this record, man. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was. <laughs> You know, I worshipped Machine Head once I heard him. You know, I was following what what he was doing over there, and and I loved what you know that 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 style of music. And so that's 
what it turned into. I was at Dynamo at '96. Oh yeah, yeah. Didn't didn't Ven is that when Venom? I think Venom played. Venom played. Uh, Slayer played. Yeah, I, I was managing Marauder and and uh, I saw and, Marauder there that time. I I was there. I was I was managing Marauder. Yeah. Brad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Who else played that year? Screw played. Yeah. Um, Neurosis played. I remember Venom. We, we went and saw Venom. That was like a big deal. <laughs> right. Yeah, they were fun. And Avedon, the drummer <laughs> at that gig, he threw out his vest, his leather vest out of the crowd, and it had his passport in it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Really? Yeah. He, he, he was just on the show. He was great. He was a great guest. Oh, he, right. he, was, he was really great. He, he, he was, he was uh, a, a lot of fun. So, so around this time, uh, and, and I have this in my notes, but – uh, as as folklore would have it, is that right? You 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 tr you tried out for Sepultura when Max left, and but you were uh, too old school. Well, like I, the the thing is, I mean, Boroy from Violent Noise fanzine. Uh, yeah. uh, he, uh, he, he blabbermouth, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. You know, um, he had said, "Hey, they're looking. You know, you should try out. You know, and I think that they already. I think that." Uh, Derek was already down there and already in the band kind of, but they're all just sure. in, you know, because they were sending out the song choke that was on that first record. Sure. Uh, and there's, they sent it out and said, Hey, write some lyrics, record some vocals. Let's hear, hear what you got type deal, which, which was a cool project in itself. You know? So I do that. I record with uh, James Murphy who was local at the time and uh, send it, send him away. And it was fun. I think they're up on the internet somewhere. But I, they, it was they were, they were just kind of they thought ah, a little little too old school not kind of what we were looking for. Did, did you? So you physically went down there? No, no, no. I recorded in a local it, studio and I just sent them the. Did, uh, okay. So, sent, that, so you didn't have to walk but, into the into the cauldron or anything. You just no, kind of, no, no. no. Yeah, I sent yeah. like a like a dat tape or something like that because there's no files to be shared or ninety six. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um. And and how does technocracy come into into play? Well, Torque kind of does its thing, and I'm uh, I got married in '95. Mm -hmm. uh, I started a uh, you called you called me a journeyman, which I I'm actually a, a, a journeyman carpenter. <laughs> I've got my, I'm a card carrying you know okay journeyman carpenter. So I'm in. I've got a great union job. I'm snowboarding. I'm golfing. I'm you know playing in three basketball leagues, and <laughs> the band thing is. Just bought a just bought a house, you know, and it's just like you know, it, it's I'm tired of being like you said, the demo guy. Hey, check out my new demo. Check out the demo. It's like yeah. they want to be that guy. I've been playing music for you know 15, 18 years at this point, and uh, it was time for me to take a break. Hmm. So I walk away from music, doing my marriage thing, and I get a call a couple years later, and it's by this guy. This is 1999 at this point. And uh, it's by this guy who's who's you know made made millions and that the, the uh, all the Silicon Valley's just blown up at this point you know and everybody's making millions on in the investments and he was a local guy and he took a bunch of Testament and Violence and Death Angel songs and and sampled them and then he was writing original lyrics on top of them so it's it was pretty funny and pretty cool and i'm it's my first introduction to pro tools and, and sequencing and all programming and all this sure. and so he asked me to record some some riffs some original riffs so i'm laying down some riffs for him and that kind of turns into more original music and kind of like i'm getting drawn into this thing and uh he's bringing in wants to bring in a drummer so i bring in my drummer mark who was in torque and violence mm -hmm. with me and he's got the uh, the V drum kit, the electronic kit we'd never seen before, you know, and everything's so high tech. And he's got these moving lights, and we're starting to play live. And so we bring in my buddy Brian Snyder to play keyboards, and he's never played keyboards before, but he's just hitting samples and hitting the you know, <laughs> playing the toys type deal. And and we we write a record, man, and we put it out ourselves. And it was a lot of fun creating these songs and and having them be. You know, not so as much metal. They're heavy, but it's Steve had such a melodic voice, and uh, it was kind of like Tool meets, you know, Fear Factory. You what know? was it? Was it well received? Yeah, I mean, in in, in 
the Bay Area especially. I mean, we've got this this show going on with moving lights and just for a club band. You know, we're doing our thirty minute changeover with all this all this gear. We had it down, and so we're you know we drawn a lot of people, and um, then the uh, Chuck Billy Chuck Schuldner, uh class thrash of the titans the thrash of the titan show comes along in 2001 mm -hmm. and all these bands are getting back together death angels are getting back together forbidden evil is getting back together they're bringing anthrax and sod are going to come out and do this big bay area benefit for the chucks that have cancer at this point right and uh you know violence is getting back together <laughs> so without uh you know, so we're going to get back together and do this reunion gig. We and, and and this and at this point, it's almost ten years. Yeah, I think it was seven years at this point since right. Violence had played. It had been yeah with with Sean, probably a little bit longer with Perry. Uh, and so we, we we get back together and we just we and, and which lineup got back together? Was Rob involved? No, it was all the originals, but but Rob Rob wasn't. Right. Wasn't asked. He wasn't in town for that. I think he was in South America or something like that. Right. Because I I approached him about doing it, and uh, his reaction was, "Well, if it's a benefit, then I'll just get Machine Head to do it because it'll be a bigger draw type deal." <laughs> and then that's the last we kind of talked about it. And right. uh, so he wasn't. And um, so it that turns into us doing some more shows. We're doing like a West Coast tour with Testament and Halford and. Violence is oh. back together for a minute. We're writing songs again. You know? And we're back. And we're back. You know? And we're and, back. <laughs> and, you know, my marriage at this point is, you know, feeling kind of the strains of me being in two bands now or just the, <laughs> just all of that kind of taking up my time or whatever. And uh, that bleeds into 2001, 2002. And, uh, and Machine Head is uh, I'm I'm talking with Adam on AOL Messenger, you know, because that that'll tell you right. the time you're on AOL. Yeah, yeah I am. And uh, and asked him what he's doing. We go snowboarding together. Me and Adam were buds. I I always liked Adam. He was always yeah. a, always a good dude. Yeah, man, he's a real dude. You know what you uh, get. Uh, yeah. By the way, I I produced um, the Machine Head video for. Um, uh, why am I drawing a blank? I, I worked with them. Uh, I did a video for um, God. They didn't went back east for Take My Scars, maybe? No, no, it was from the first record with Chris Contos. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was All in right. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. It was it was in Hollywood. Why am I drawing a blank? I, I, I it'll it'll come to me. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I worked I worked with them very early on, and uh, uh -huh. you know when Contos was in the band. Yeah. Cool. And, and I, I always liked Adam. He was he was the he was very grounded. You know? Right, right, right. That lineup, <laughs> that lineup was so good with Chris and Logan and Adam and they were great. That, that fucking, you know, the, that yeah. first record is so so good. Old, that's the name of the, the song. Old, oh, old. All right, where the guys yeah, yeah. Jesus is walking down the street. And... That's that's right. That's right. I, I produced that. I produced that in Hollywood. A guy named Bill Ward, not the Bill Ward from Black Sabbath, but a guy named Bill Ward directed it. He also directed the Life of Agony video through and through. After that, and I and I also produced a brutal truth video for him for the song oh, wow. God Player. But then after that, he kind of just turned. He just sort of morphed into being an editor, you know, yeah. a, 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 a film editor. But yeah, I, I, so I worked with Machine Head early on, and and, and so yeah, killer man. Yeah. So yeah. I'm talking with Adam online, and uh, he says I'm asking what he's doing. He said, Yeah, we, you know, because I heard that Aru was no longer in the band. Sure. The guitar player. And then he I said, do you have any dates lined up? And he said, uh, yeah, we got two weeks of festivals coming up. And I said, all right, well, I'll just wheel my shit over and we'll, we'll get to work, you know, and kind of kidding, kind of not kidding. And then he came back and was just like, yeah, let's, let's see if it can happen type deal. So broached it with Rob, they were down. And so it was, you know, that was my introduction into, you know, machine head, went off and and really really connected and everything was was really cool playing together is a good connection uh came back from that tour my marriage went to crap so it was, it was like all right they were still writing as a three-piece so it's just like that was that was my time yeah there he yeah. is yeah 
That was I probably mean, 2012. Mm, a little bit, a little bit later on after. Yeah. That. I mean, yeah, after you. Yeah. I yeah. mean, look. I mean, not that we, not that we get into the 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 sort of the uh, the heavy scuttlebutt here, but uh, I mean, I would think that it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, here's a guy you were in a band with previously who went on and to do his own thing and and mm -hmm. really had some unique success with it, you know, and, and really kind of blew machine head up. And now you was it was it was it like you were joining his band now? Were the dynamics when you joined Machine Head were the dynamics different than what the dynamics were in in violence? Yeah, hundred percent. It it okay. wasn't that he joined my band back in right. the day. Sure. And uh then I joined his band. That's exactly right. what happened. And I understood that. And that was sure it was uh prefaced to me that, that was that's that's what how it was that it we were a band with a with a leader. Sure. And uh I got that and I was yeah. respected him as a player and um you know, as, as a musician and, you know, that didn't change and that hasn't changed. And, and, and though that, it, though a lot of times that sort of an instance is really nice. You don't have to carry the load. You don't have to deal with the bullshit. <laughs> send me, send me the itinerary. What are oh, we there, doing? Oh, there's bullshit to deal with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. Trying to be nice here. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is the first uh, you played on. Uh, this is the first record uh, through the Ashes of Empires, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. And any any this is the first time in the studio with them. Any recollections? And and any 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 anything resonates all these years later? Yeah. I mean, I I remember those sessions well. I remember uh, um, practicing for my rhythm tracks in the vocal. I had a, a prophecy. Uh, preamp. So I was in the vocal vocal booth practicing uh, my rhythms, and then I would come out and track all the rhythms. I tracked all the rhythms on this on this uh, this record, and uh, so it's it's uh, learning them all. I mean, the, most of the songs were written before I was in the band. Mm -hmm. I contributed to a couple, um, but then there was a European release first. And in the interim, we had done some touring and we'd written another song. So by the time the song, the record came out in the U.S., it contained a track that I and it was the catalyst for. My wrists were the beginning of this song called Seasons Wither. So that was cool mm. uh, have that included on that, too. I think this record sounds great, man. I, yeah. I, yeah, I, good. I, yeah. Rob, was, Rob, it was his first time like producing. We didn't have a producer on that, so it was it was cool to you know he's got a lot of great ideas for tones and what the yeah. songs sound like. So it was uh, it was it was awesome, man. I had, it was a good time. Good. Um, and and, and you 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 uh, you punched the machine head clock for for a bunch of years, man. For it was a long run. Yeah, yeah. I was there. I was there, dude, for sixteen years officially in the band. Fifteen. Um, so it was good, man. It was a good run. We we wrote a lot of good songs. We made, good. you know, the, the live shows were awesome. I I think that coming into the band and watching them play, they I always told them that they looked like three guys up front doing their own thing. You know, three guys. And what I really wanted to incorporate was uh, some connection between the members on stage when mm -hmm. I go see death angel and I see, you know, Rob and Mark and, and the dudes together, they vibe off each other. And mm -hmm. I, really, and that transcended to me. I really got that. So I wanted to kind of bring that death angel, you know, on stage vibe to the band. And so there's, there's a lot of moments where we all get together. And so I think that that was, you know, something that I'm proud of bringing to that band. Do you feel that through the years sort of things sort of dissipated? Um, I think that it just became, hmm, hmm. <laughs> you know, it. Was it like, I, I mean, I, I, you know, was it a little bit like a job after a while? Well, it was a job after a while. And it was. Uh, Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> <It's so laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Hey. Uh, um, 
you know, it, it did become routine and, and certain things. And once I got to a point of where it was just material that I didn't believe in mm. or things that I didn't weren't genuine for me was, is, was a time for me to kind of move on when it, stuff it was, I wasn't connecting with. It was, I'm t- you know, I've, I, I really don't want to, I want to choose my words careful. Please, and, please do. I mean, we'll talk about machine head for here for, for, you know, 5% of what this interview is and that'll be what yeah. gets grabbed, you know? Yeah. 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 A we, horrible we, time in the band and, or, you know, and I, I want to be positive about my time. Cause there. you know that they watch my show, man. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I want, I want it to be, I want to look back on all the positives yes. that were and yeah. how, but, but without, things going south and things going in a different direction. I wouldn't be where I'm at, which is, you know, light years of, of happiness and, and uh, fulfilled uh, moments. And, you know, it's, it's, it. one of the best things I ever did was join machine head. Good. And one of the best things I did was quit machine head. <laughs> There you go. You know, it's like it's we say this a lot on the show. It's like that Star Trek episode where they go back, you know, and you can't change one thing in the past or it'll change the present, yes. you know. So <laughs> it, it just goes back to that. Like, you know, if, if that, you know, that all that is what brought me here. And I'm very happy here right now. Absolutely. Man, I there, there are so many. God, the festivals that we played and the shows that we played yeah. and the connections. And, you know, what's really cool is I went and, I went and saw them. Uh, in Sacramento, they came. They came by, and this kid uh, they had playing guitar for him was uh, Reese. He's mm. from a band called Havoc, mm. and I, love, I mean, Violence played with Havoc one time, and I really admire the, the dude's playing and and him as a person, and and so I wanted to see him play, you know. And so I kind of I bought a ticket, you know, and I, <laughs> I went with my hood up, and I just L- lurking, kinda, lurking in the back, right? I kind of just went in, and I found myself a little spot, and just. And I had the best time, man. I had, you know, Good. listening to the songs and air guitaring and just, you know, I had, I was able to just Good. put on those musical blinders of all the, the personal shit and everything else and just like rock out to the tunes and had a, had a great time. So, and watching Reese play was, was awesome. So, you know, I don't, I've got no ill. I don't want the band to fail. I don't want them to whatever it's, it's, you know, trying to be as, as positive as I can in this sense. Absolutely. And and we do our best to lead honorable, righteous lives. And, and like I said, you know, uh, these are the things that brought us here, you know, and you had such a run with them, man. Like, so, you know, uh, what, four, five, five studio records, you know, lot, lo- is it four? Two, three, One, two, four, five, five studio records. Yeah. And a lot, and that, that live record too, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was awesome, man. It was it was great, and it was just time. It was time. I mean, I can't for everything that has happened since. It's it hasn't even been five years yet, and like right. the list of shit that I have done since then. Yeah, is, like, I'm not even I'm not even out of the band 24 hours, and I'm playing in Slayer. You know, I'm get asked <laughs> to play in Slayer. Listen, we'll, we'll, let's let's get to that. Let me take my first sponsor break here for a couple minutes. I'm gonna do yeah. a I'm gonna do a Women of the Pit, a little Women of the Pit segment when we come out of the break. Uh, you got a couple of minutes and we'll come back and let's talk about you playing with Slayer. Let's talk about BPMD. Oh, yeah. uh, let's talk about the, the, the Lamb God, Lamb of yeah, God yeah. and all that. So we'll see you in a few, man. Well, there you have it. This is the one, the only, often imitated, never duplicated. The New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Our guest today is Phil Demel from Violence and Machine Head. Let's take a word from our sponsor. Let's come back. Let's do a Women of the Pit thing. The show will go on. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections of music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook and Instagram.
Hey guys, Vlad from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in a new location on West 3rd Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger, we have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to, to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do. And we are happy to see you guys. Peace, what it do? Welcome to NYT Comics at 117 Main Street, Dobbs, Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs, toys, collectibles. Got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer. Video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go. Skate decks all day, baby. We also have the young reader section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, the pops. People love the pops. Star Wars. <laughs> We are New York Hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it on. Come on now. And we're back. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Just want to remind everybody, please support the show. There's a Patreon page. Uh, by the way, the, the uh, next volume of the New York Hardcore Chronicles book, 1990 to 1999, is being designed. I'm going to be. I'm going to start putting up a couple of pages free to all patrons. Please, uh, I want to shout out my new patrons: Bridget Holmes, Jay Banks, Chris Dominico, and Joshua Sanders. Thank you for supporting the show and enabling. Thank you for being an enabler uh, and enabling me to do uh, this this show. Uh, there it is. Please join PayPal. It's our community. Excuse me. Uh, Patreon. It's our community within a community. I want to talk about a couple of um, upcoming shows. Uh, this Sunday, hot off the punk rock vegan movie, Moby, will be back on the show. Um, I highly recommend this film. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's a great, it's like a, a great, uh, the first third of it is like a great hardcore uh, punk doc. Um, week after that, Kira from Black Flag, Twisted Roots. Uh, she's a sound editor. Um, her team won an Oscar for Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, this will be a great one. Uh, Wednesday, April 19th, Rusty Pistachio from H2O. Wednesday, April 26th, a new music spotlight show. We love doing these shows. We love talking about new stuff coming out. We got Jerry A from Poison Idea and Crime Scene coming on to talk about his new release, we got Sammy from Fang coming on, um, Dan Nastasi from Kings Never Die, and a couple of the Cropsy guys. So these shows are always fun. Tune in. Wednesday, May 3rd, B-Girl, Cynthia Ross, OG, OG, Max's Kansas City, and CBGB represent. She was engaged to Stiv Bader's Friends with Sid and Nancy. Sunday, May 7th, Theo from the Lunachicks. Just announced this the other day, Sunday, May 14th, Wino from the Obsessed and St. Vitus. Yes, good one. And then Sunday, June 4th, Tim Shaw from Ensign and Fuck It, I Quit. And um, I recently, recently found out when someone was on the, who was he a roadie for? I just, he was just at our show the other day. And I was like, I don't know, who did he work for? I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Maybe somebody remembers, but I saw him the other day at our show and, and we were talking about that. Uh, that said, let's bring on our friend from Women of the Pit, Lori Dawn. What's up? Hello. How you doing? You know, <laughs> I'm flying hear... solo today. What's that? <laughs> I'm flying solo today. Okay. Don't be scared. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is it true that you will be cowering by the exit door for this? Yes, it is. The rumors are true. I will be cowering by the exit. This looks brutal. This lineup looks insane. I can't wait, though. Right. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great. This is Come one of those, like, everybody's going to be bleeding and bruised. 
and we're going to set it off. We're going to play exactly. first. Exactly. Right? <laughs> That's right. Yes. Thank you, Sean Refuse uh, Chumhuffer. Um, yes. He, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it, uh, Timmy, Tim, Tim Shaw worked for Lars for years in Rancid. That's right. So that said, let's talk about this group here. Um, we could play a little video clip, but, but let's let's start with let's start with this real quick. Let's talk. Uh, about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk um, about it. There you go. Tell us about who is this? What's going on? Okay, so this is a band I've been listening to um, for a while. They are Dying Wish from Portland. So I picked a West Coast band today. So we're, since we're on the West Coast, um, they've been around since 2018. They are a metalcore band, heavy on the metal side, I'd say. And I just love how this band incorporates like and layers all of my favorite elements in music. They've got, you know, quick, solid guitar riffs. They've got powerful breakdowns. They've got a little thrash, a little, you know, a little like melodic death metal. You know, they've got a badass vegan vocalist who can switch from like fry vocals to growl to this, then break into this like beautiful you know, rich, melodic, soprano. Good God, woman. <laughs> so that song is uh, Now You'll Rot. And that now, wait a second. Girl. That's this? That's this gal singing like that? Good yes, that, that that cute gal, yeah. Good Lord. Here, yes. here's, another, here's another picture. Okay. Wow, looks like dudes, looks like dudes. Listen, Portland's gnarly. Like, if you're a band in Portland, you you definitely got to bring it, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, right, Herve. That shit is hard, yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know so, what? I, I love it. I love it. So, um, yeah. I mean, that song. Um, I think that song was "Now You'll Rot." Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, Brooke. Hey, what's up, Brooke? Brooke, Brooke says when we were young, we were pissed too. Yeah, you know. <laughs> You know, yeah. singing about the police state, you know, that tends to piss wow. you off. So. Yeah. Hard, right. right, Eddie? Hard. Yeah. So that was off their first album, which um, you can find anywhere you stream music. Um, and uh, like I said, it's a it's a great mix of just a lot of different elements. They layer really, really well. The songwriting is consistent, hard, um, just really, um, just a really well- you know, full bodied band, I'd say, you know, how did, they, how did they come on your radar screen? Uh, you know, they have been, Oh, they just toured with hate breed. Yes. I, I don't know if the, I didn't hear about that one, but I know that they toured with, um, knock loose. Mm. So, and, and also counterparts and they're going on tour, uh, to Europe with counterparts. So, uh, yeah, no, this would be a, you know, this would be a great band to see live. And it just so happened that I missed them both times that they were in Massachusetts and New York. I think I was like in New, like in New York when they were in Massachusetts and vice versa. So gotcha. missed them last time around, but uh, they would be an amazing band to see live. They are touring uh, Europe this month. Let's do, and... one more. Let's do one more taste. Sure. Ready? <laughs> I love her little ponytails. Yeah. I love it when, like, you no, know, they make, yo, they make my band look soft. I'm in a band. <laughs> yeah. My band is soft. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta, you know, you know she's what? got like these like cute little, you know, pigtails and she comes out all cute and everything. She's like a Venus flytrap, you know? You know, like the, like, what's your name from Concrete Ties is like that. She's Absolutely. Like, she's like this little girl and she comes out and she's like, wow. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Amy from the end AD, the same thing, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. So, well, thank you. We have you. a new that, song that... out today, so check them out on IG, any way you stream music. Enjoy. And we'll see you by the exit at the Biohazard. You will see me by the exit. Cowering. Yes. And I... don't forget, don't forget. Oh, 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 oh. Strong there you and go. together. All right. You know, check it good. out. Very good. All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. Take have care. a good day, my lady. All right. All right. Bye. There you have it, Women of the Pit Spotlight, the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. In the meantime, let's get back with our guest, Mr. Phil Demmel. Hey, Amen. That was great. That was hard, right? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> They're good. I got to ramp, ramp up my game, man. I got to talk to my I got to talk to my guys, bro. It's hard, yo. Yo, hard. <laughs> You know what? Since we're sort of speaking the vernacular, any New York memories for you? Like first time coming to New York? Did, did New York like mean anything to you guys? Like first time you came here? Was it an exciting place? Anything? Any recollections? Yeah, it was, it was a big deal for us to. Uh, I think it was like the third or fourth show on that Testament tour we played Lemoore's. And you see the shirts, you know, you see the, you hear all the stories and stuff. And, um, but like, in 1988, you were spoon-fed information. It's not instant, yeah. like, oh, let me just Google blah, 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 and sure. all stuff comes up. So yeah. uh, pulling into those clubs and, like, going, holy fuck, you know, this is this is where it all happens. And uh, we always had great shows in New York. New York always really supported the band. Brooklyn, um, I forget, we played one place in 90 called, like, maybe the Marquee or something like that. Yeah, yeah, the Marquee, yeah, uh-huh. And uh, I was here. Yep. Yeah, those those they're always always a good show. We just recently did a couple of shows in uh, the Brooklyn Bazaar. I think it was violence did two nights there and it was it was cool, man. It was um, right on. meeting the bands and, and hanging out with the dudes. My buddy, if you have to know Dom, Dominic DeLuca, right? Yes, of course. Yeah. So he, he he was a big violence fan from the beginning and. Well, he's 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 out and he has the store out in Hollywood now. Yeah, he's in SoCal now. But yeah, but I, he but he came up out of Brooklyn. He had a he was he, he had he had a stand at the uh, at the at the um, uh, what was it called? What, what, Brooklyn guys? What was the East Bay Bazaar? What was it? Uh, um, what was the place? Dominic Luca had a uh, had a little something bizarre. What's it called? All the way out on Flappish Ave. I'm sorry, drawing a blank. Um, but he he was he was a DJ. Yeah, MTV Dom, man on the street. Big talker, yeah. talker. <laughs> love Dom. Just saw him yeah. recently. Every time I, I try to see him, every time we're in, we're in town. But you know, he's always he was our New York connection at that time. And now, nah, not not to veer off, but Paulie Pork Chops vid says, "Hey Drew, please ask Phil about his excitement." Of seeing Murphy's Law open for violence yeah. at one of the early Milwaukee metal fests. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That was in 88. Our, uh, uh, we played Milwaukee Metal Fest. And I love that. Uh, I forget the name of the record, but it had Quest for Herb on it. Yeah. Quest yeah. Yeah. Sure. Herb, I, forget, I forget the name. It had Cavity Creeps on it. And, yeah, yeah. But I loved, I loved Murphy's Law. So that was one of the bands I wanted to go see that. What's the name of that record? Uh, the first Murphy's Law record. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Back with the bomb. Back with the bomb. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Don hey, man. Herbs in the man. Yeah. Plant for herb. Don Foose from the yeah. Spud Monsters. Is that yeah, Don yeah. Foose from the yes, Monsters? Yes, of course. We had their demo um, yeah. in the van because we had a bag full of demos because we were so excited. Bands are giving us yeah. a. We go through the bag and Joe Gizmo and the Spud Monsters, man. That was one of our favorites. Yeah, yeah. It's garbage night. Take out the trash. No matter Back with what. the bomb. That's what it was. Hey, hey, Philip, what's up in Croatia, bro? What's you up? Know, oh, yeah, Philip. Oh, you know Philip? He just he just worked with violence on our last trip back there. Is that right? Yeah, amazing dude. All right, there he is. Sup from Croatia. What's up? You know, you, you, you listen. Since we're since we're just sort of bouncing the ball back and forth, and 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 this just kind of came up. Uh, you know, this Milwaukee Metal Fest thing. I noticed that. You are playing Milwaukee, uh, and, and we'll get to sort of the reformation and all that. But so violence is is on the first night, and Biohazard's on, and it's a hell of a lineup, man. Yes, yeah, it's stacked, man. That that whole yeah. weekend, it looks solid. Yeah. So I'll be I'll be there Thursday night. If there's rumors of something happening Thursday night, and it may or may not happen, but then we'll play Friday. Then I'll probably I'll probably take off on Saturday. But there's yeah. a lot of throughout the weekend I'd like to see. Yeah, I, you know they want they want me to come out. Um, if I come out, I'll be there Thursday and Friday. I'm doing we're doing a show in Tompkins Square Park the next day. I got to fly home the next morning. We're doing a Tompkins show. I got to be home. I got to okay. be back. I got to be I got to be back for that. Brutal. Two hour drive, two hour flight. I don't know how oh. you get lag from that there, Drew. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid it, but I'm trying to avoid coming out there. But but we'll see. But it's good to know you're on the bill, and I'd get to see you. Yeah, it'd be fun. Let me know. Yeah. If you, let me know. And, if you it. So, so you mentioned the Slayer thing, right? Let's uh, let, let's get a little. Let me know.
<laughs> Bro, you know what? You know what I have? You know what I have in my notes about this? I, I got to read it verbatim. Do you just stand there and hope you don't get burned? <laughs> <laughs> I just was trying to concentrate on the songs. You know, I don't want to blow the songs. And you know, I, I shadowed Gary Holt for a couple of shows before then. Right. And uh, he gets all up in that fire, man. He gets right up in it, and then oh. it's like, oh. No way, he's he's an animal. Gary Holt is, you know, I mean, obviously one of our, you know, thrashers, sure. and in the Bay Area especially, heroes. But I, you know, I worship Gary Holt. I, you know, nothing but respect for that man. You, you know, when you see Slayer from the audience, you feel the heat. Yeah. I can only imagine standing it's ten feet away from it, man. Yeah, and and the Hello Eights especially. There's just so much. Yeah. yeah. God, look at that, like the look at this shit. Like, <laughs> pentagram, like the one in the middle is a pentagram of fire. It's so crazy. <laughs> the I had to, I had to kind of like zone in on just playing. Like the first show, I did four shows, right. and the first show was just. Well, well, how, how did they come about? Like, how did the call come in? Like, how how did it come about? I had okay. So my breakup with Machine Head happens September twenty sixth of eighteen. Um, I drive to drive to Rob's house and just tell him out in front of his house, like, Hey, here's my, <laughs> here's my keys. Here's my credit card. You know, here's, you know, it's over, you know, well, should we try it? No, it's just done, you know, and, and we're supposed to film a video the next day or, and there was a tour coming up and I was like, the next day I called him back and said, Hey, I'm not going to bail on a tour. That's a dick move. You know, it's like, if you guys can't get anybody to replace me, then, you know, I'll do the tour and honor the tour or whatever. And sure. then Dave McLean quit like the next day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there was, and, you know, and Dave he, was in the band for what, 20 years, right? Yeah. He, he joined he, in. He, he took Conto. He took Conto. 95. He was in yeah. 95. Yeah. Yeah. So, we both leave pretty much the same time and we agree to like honor the tour. Let's do it. It'll be like a farewell thing. And, you know, super awkward. There's uh, you know, you're going on a honeymoon with somebody you just got a divorce with type deal. Yeah, right. But, so we finished that. It's the last show we're saying goodbye. You know, we've me and my wife just had uh, our son Wolf. So, and we just bought a bar. So she, we've got a, a business she's been taking care of and a, and a, six month old kid that's at home. I'm coming home from this tour. She comes out to the show. It's the last show. I'm all, you tear it up, babe. I'll, I'll drive us home. You know, it's in Santa Cruz through the mountains, you know, I said, I'll, I'll drive us home. You get, you know, get shit faced tonight. And so she does, she's in the pit, you know, at one point she's making her way up front and she's hunting and fishing, you know, one eye up here, one eye down here. And so she makes her way up to the balcony and it's like, Hey, it's the last song. We're saying goodbye. My wife has disappeared. She's throwing up all over my cousins or something, you know. And <laughs> so we come backstage. They wheel her back on a on a road case, you know, and she's just like puking and like just done. And so that's my, you know, it, it was a blessing for me because I didn't want to stay there for all the goodbyes and the weird hugs and everything. It's like that. Hey, I set up Dexter's kill room in my in my. You went, in other words, you went out with your boots on. Yes. <laughs> I line up my vehicle just with towels. So, you know, she's, yeah. <laughs> we're going home through a windy road. It's just like, so she, we wake up the next day and it's just like, I'm home, babe. I'm here to help with everything. And, and I get a text at, I'm standing at the foot of the bed. I'll never forget. It. I get a text and I'm standing at the foot of the bed. And I just dropped the phone and she, what's up? You know, what's wrong? And, and I read it again to make sure. And it's Carrie saying, Hey, could you be here in two days and learn? You know, I'm all reading it. It's not like maybe or perhaps there's a chance or there's. A, it's like no, we need you here. And she's all what to learn 19 songs in two days. <laughs> songs, right? <laughs> and uh, I'm all, and I showed it to her, and she's like, "You got to go. You have to go." <laughs> I said, so I I text Terry, Carrie back, and I'm all, "Get me a set right now. I need the set list right now. There's no yeah. time. You know, yeah." A lot of the songs I wasn't familiar with, some of the newer stuff, and sure. 
I uh, so I'm I'm unpacking from tour and and listening to some of the songs and just immersing myself in them. Uh, so that was a Sunday. Show was on Saturdays. On Sunday, I get the text. On Monday, I'm going down to Machine Head uh, storage to pick up all my gear because it's like it's divorce day. You know, you're grabbing all my gear. So but, I'm but wow, my gear. wow, that's kind of exciting. It's divorce day, but I got to get my shit because I, I got to go play with Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and I'm not. I haven't really told anybody because it's a secret. Because it's Gary's dad was in failing health and he wanted yeah, to come home. Sure. That's Gary's news to share. So I'm not really telling anybody. And so I go pick up my machine head stuff. The guys and the crew are there. And I tell a couple of them, you know, like this unbelievable thing. And there was, you know, anyways. So they all come to my bar that night, you know, because they're leaving town. And so we we bought, a, me and my, my wife bought a, a business. We bought a bar. So they all come to the bar. We say our goodbyes there. And uh, then Tuesday I'm on a flight. You know, I'm just fucking God. There's no time. I haven't sat with a guitar with these songs yet. So, so, so was there any rehearsal with them at all? So on the way over, because, I, because I'm hoping you say no, there was no rehearsal. That's so what on, I'm on the way over, I have the set and I'm breaking the songs down. I've got my legal pad sure. Sure. and I'm just, and the way I do it with, with learning these songs is like intro first verse. Intro first, first. Listen sure. to it over, immerse yourself, and then you go. Okay, verse, first chorus. Then you just you just build. It's that Rosetta Stone, sure. you know, immersion. You just oh, repeat it. Su do it succession again. of events. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm on. I'm I'm taking notes the entire flight over there. I'm just like going through every song. I'm trying to guess, you know, who is what side I'm learning because sometimes Gary's doing other shit, and so I'm watching some YouTube. When I get there. When I land, my guitars don't make it. I don't have oh. my fucking guitars. Oh my gosh. So I'm on the phone with Willie and, and Mark from Lama God and and uh Johnny Rock and Roll from Anthrax and Scott Ian and the obituary guys. I'm like, does anybody have a guitar I could borrow? Oh. You know, Kerry has one guitar, but it's fixed, it's a fixed bridge and it's in uh it's in drop B, which only one of the songs is in. <laughs> Is so that the one? Is that the one that my friend Vincent Castiglia did with in his blood? That one, you know? The no, one? no, 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 no. Yeah, it's that very old guitar. Uh, uh, so I'm in. I'm I'm transposing everything. And if you if you're familiar with this, so everything is a half and a step and a half down. So I'm having to transpose it on this other guitar to where oh. I think it is. I'm watching YouTube. I'm I'm transposing all this shit. So I we get to the the first gig, and I have. Sound check. So I have two songs. You know, what do you want to play? I'm like, well, the first song. Let's play the first song so I can at least rehearse the first song, you know. And uh, that was it. I, I had two songs of rehearsal with them. Two songs? Two songs. And uh, you did, and then the rest of the, the other 17 songs in the set, you were just, you were just winging it. Yeah. No, I didn't wing it. I knew them. I was ready. Yeah, okay. I was ready. I had them. I I was ready. You know, the solos were Jeff solos. I don't think that he played the same twice. Yeah, sure. I, I got his sure memorable lines and tried to yeah. keep it as true as I could. What but, key, what key what key are we in? Right. Well, yeah, and you know, after the first show, they're all or leading up to it, they're all well. Just just stop on time and play in key. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I could have done that two days ago, you know. You, 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 know what it, you, you know what it reminds me of? Um, my, my old friend Todd's youth, God rest his soul. Um, he got a call to play in Motorhead. And oh. he, same kind of thing. And he was, he was, he, he tells the story. He was on the plane, you know, learning the shit on the plane. And he gets there to, to, to the, to the sound check. And he's like ready to fucking rehearse. And they sound check one song. And Lemmy takes his bass off and he says, aren't we going to do more songs? And Lemmy basically says to him, if you don't, no, first he asked him, what, what, what songs are we going to play? And Lemmy says, we're going to play Motorhead songs. <laughs> <laughs> and then after one song, he takes it off and he goes, aren't we going to do it? And he goes, listen, if you don't know it by now, you're never going to know it. Yeah. And like that was it, and, and, and yeah, and and he killed it, and he killed it. it, was, it That's awesome, man. It, it 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 was great. So so um, didn't Slayer Slayer call on you more than once? 
I was uh, I was kind of like the bullpen guy, just yeah. in case. Let's go on. to the righty, you know. Yeah, it's just I was I was just you know be ready if if something happens type deal, and that was like a precursor to what was to come. You know, when uh, especially you know after Slayer's done, then the world shuts down for a couple of years, and sure. um, so then it just became uh, Lamb of God approached me when they were going out with their tour with Megan. Oh, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm the big one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So those guys that we I'd known for a while. Go for it! <laughs> wow, that looks like a fun gig. Class act. Yeah. Those guys are yeah. a class act. Totally uh, real and genuine people. And um, I was kind of like their, their bullpen guy for a minute while, you know, all the everybody's getting tested and if somebody's going to get sick type deal. And sure. They had me learn both sides, Mark and Willie's, just in case something happened. Uh -huh. um, there came they they needed me to do, you know, some I did some shows in the states. I did a run with them in Europe. Uh, I actually got called to play bass for them uh, for five shows. I mean, I mean, after I mean, I'm assuming after touring with them and watching them to get the call. You, you know, you're somewhat acclimated to their to their to their set. Yeah, I, and I had been. I had been prepared for, to do their to do their set the summer previous. And you know, there was a crazy time to where Violence was set to to do the Bloodstock Festival, and uh, Devin Townsend was headlining it. And mm -hmm. so I uh, I'd met Devin, and he was looking for local local guys mm -hmm. to, to do his shows. He saw, hey, you're going to be a Bloodstock. Why don't you do the Bloodstock gig with me? You know, and so I learned the Devin Townsend set. I got a call from Lamb of God. I learned both sides of their set. Wow. Uh, there, was a, there was a moment when uh, Testament got offered a corporate gig that Alex wasn't going to be able to make. So there was a chance that I was going to do a Testament show. So I learned the Testament set. Overkill is doing a one off that they approached me about doing. So yeah, that was the tour. There was a one off that I did. So I, I learned the Overkill set. <laughs> Metal That's Allegiance. True. Metal Allegiance is doing a show in Long Island, so I had twenty-five songs of Metal Allegiance songs to do. Hold on, hold on. I got the visual. I got the visual. <laughs> Actually, Stephen Messina shot some of those, some of the Metal Allegiance. Oh, uh, yeah. Shots from that night, right? Yeah, me and John Bush there. Yeah. Yep. And so uh, then my cover band at home, the Merkins, are doing a show, and there's forty songs in that set. So at one point. In the summer of 2021, I think it is, I have 175, 176 songs that I've learned, wow. you know, from Devin Townsend, Lama well, God, Testament, you know, Overkill, all this, Metal Allegiance, all these different, just, you know, crazy. I was maxed out at that point. It was just like. The, the yeah. Metal Allegiance thing looked like it, it was a lot of fun, man. It is. And that's what I, you know, I love that gig because it's all uh, just. You know, people that I admire and and songs that I dig and it's and it's a challenge too, you know. So yeah. it's it's you know, Walter Walter wants to Ryan. What's up, Walter Ryan? Band whore. Look who's talking. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Look, look who's talking. Right, exactly. I think I think he might have mentioned it. I just did a I just did a solo on the the new powerhouse record too, which is pretty cool. I saw I saw I saw Walter playing drums for Machine Head. Oh, right. right. I saw that. I right saw on. That. Um, here's another. Yeah, these are all. Oh, these are all Middle Legion shots. I like the. Uh, I like the the Dublin CA. Yeah. Uh, vest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm doing a. He showed a picture of me with uh with John Bush there. We uh. Yeah. Uh, Michael Orlando, do you know who he is? 
Mike Orlando. Mike Orlando. He's from Staten Island. He was in a band called Adrenaline Mob with Russell Allen. Yes, I know the Old band. Yeah. I know yeah. you're not in this shot, but this is from that show. I am in that shot. That's me oh. alone, kid. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just looked at the guitar and I'm like, it's not the V. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's me, yeah. man. Yeah. So me and John and uh, Mike Orlando and Jason Bittner from Shadows Fall. He's playing sure. a song, playing it in Overkill. Yeah. Uh, Jack Gibson are writing a record band, so it's uh, we got about ten songs done, seven songs with vocals. So that's that. I don't know what it's going to be, but you know, it's exciting. Where? Oh, I'm looking for. And I forgot Nonpoint. I did play with Nonpoint. Where is my? Hold on. I'm looking for my. Uh, let's talk about uh, BPMD as a, as a, as I'm. Um, sort of tracking down this shot I have. Uh, how did that come together? So BPMD is uh, Bobby Blitz, B, Mike Portnoy, P, Mark Mingy, who's the Metal Allegiance uh, there you go. head oh, guy. There you go. Yep. He's the M and then I'm the D. Mm. <laughs> so that was, look at Mike's shirt. It's the Women and Children first cover. So we tried to cover yeah. To copy that, I picked up on that. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we what we did was just take a bunch of '70s American bands, had to be released in the '70s, had to be American bands, and we did uh, we did ten cover songs, and we mm -hmm. each got to choose two of them, and nobody could, could complain about your choices. And then we had two wild card uh, picks. So it was Errol Smith and. Ted Nugent and Mountain, uh, Blue Easter Colt, Van Halen, nice. bands like that. So we covered them and kind of meddled them up. So uh, that was, you know, something we did. And then, then the pandemic hit and we just released the record and, you know, maybe do another record. Maybe, yeah. maybe. And this one, this one, uh, uh, this one caught my eye, my journeyman friend. <laughs> Oh yeah! Holy crap! Yeah! Wow! Yeah. So that was uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Mike Mark Abatista, uh -huh. uh, puts together this thing called Hail, and Ellison did it. You know, uh, Andreas from Sepultura's they've done yeah. it. Yeah, it didn't didn't um um, what's his name starts uh, singing um Ripper Owens. Ripper was on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this was this lineup. And uh, we we're supposed to go through all these, through Turkey and go through Russia and a, and a bunch of places. And this is uh, the promotion kind of fell apart and, you know, uh, borders were breaking down at this point. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm not too sure if I want to go into Russia right now, you know. But right. we did play in Dubai and we did a show in Bahrain with this lineup. And it was fun, man. We were playing Maiden and Pantera and Motorhead. And, you know, it was this a good is, time. This is like the kind of thing that, like, you get this into Russia and Poland and like the Czech Republic. It, yeah. it, it, I would think this would be epic over yeah. there. They go, they're, they go nuts for it. And absolutely and the kids in these, in these countries were just, they didn't give a fuck if it was us four and not, you know, yeah. whoever. they're getting to, a chance to get to go to a show and scream out yeah. these lyrics, you know, and yeah, it was a great time. That, that, that That's, that's great. Um, what, did, what, yeah. You know, you, okay, let, let's, 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 let's bring it back around. Uh, we'll do a couple more minutes. We'll take a quick break and we'll take questions from around, but world, but let, let's, let's swing it. Let's swing it back around to sort of violence, getting back together. What, what, what was sort of like the mission statement and, and like, where, where do you stand, stand now? And of course, you know, uh, you have one of my good old friends in the band these days. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, as soon as I quit Machine Head, Sean approached me about doing some shows. And the last I had seen of Sean, he was in pretty poor health. He had gotten a liver, liver transplant and it hadn't been taken and wasn't looking too good. So I was pretty surprised that he was wanting to do some shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we do a couple of reunion shows in April. This is four months later. They sell out in, you know, minutes. Sure. And at the punk rock spot in Oakland called the Metro is super mm. 
you know, we, there's no backdrops, there's half stacks and there's, you know, no barricades. And it's just, <laughs> it was just like, it was like and down and dirty. Just like 1986 all over again, man. It was so nice. fun. Good. And uh, we continue to do a couple things and uh, I start writing some music and uh, I talked to, to Brian and Tracy over at Metal Blade and into doing a, an EP. I said, I just want to do, you know, four songs keep it short and I'd rather just, you know, hit you in the face a few times and then get out and leave you wanting more instead of, you know, mm -hmm. oh, okay, well, I've heard enough of this type deal. And it was good, man. It was good. Uh, was that Let the World Burn? Yeah, it was Let the World Burn. Yeah, mm -hmm. I turned in five songs and proud of those songs and, you know, the recording. You know, I listened to it this morning and I got to say, production-wise – it just sounded very contemporary and really, it sounded yeah. great. Really full. It really, it was like, it, it really was, it really was a big sound. I, I really enjoyed it. Right on, man. Thank you. I went, yeah. I, I wanted it to be eternal nightmare part two. You know, I really mm -hmm. wanted it to, to have the same feel of those songs. I went back and immersed myself in the, into the record again and into those riffs and challenged myself as a guitar player. I was able to, uh, uh, record my solos at home, which meant a lot to me to, to here at the home studio to be able to do that. And, um, so I was really proud of that record. And how did how did how did Christian uh, come across your radar screen? So I'd known Christian for you know back in I met him around maybe to manufactured Torque actually opened for Fear Factory in San Francisco. Uh, and so we had kind of connected. He's a Raider fan. So, it, and we had a mutual fan and right. brother, Mark Hernandez. Sure. And, uh, so we kept in kind of touch. And, uh, so he, you know, he was a Jackson guy. And when I got on Jackson, and, uh, so we were, you know, kept in touch that way. He actually came down, I think it was the archetype record mm. that, uh, they were going on Jackson tour. So we wanted to put some solos on one of their records. So I went down and kind of showed him some ideas or what could be done or showed him a couple of things that I, I don't think made on the record. But so I knew he was a big violence fan and uh, the original guy, Dean, we were just getting to a point to where he, he wasn't going to be able to make it and be at, be at shows. And so he was going to be like the fill in guy. Sure. And uh, So he was going to play some shows that, that Dean couldn't. And then it just kind of turned into, Dean couldn't be there, so he's just the guy. Mm -hmm. And and that's how it stands today. Yeah, Christian, um, our original drummer Perry is no longer with the band. Uh, we got this kid Adrian from a band called Ex Mortis playing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And Ira Black, who's played with a lot of bands, playing playing on the other guitar. So I am. Uh, I do still do some Lamb of God filling stuff. I got a couple shows with them this month. Um, I'm my spot with violence right now is kind of, uh, I'm going to do like one-off stuff like Milwaukee metal fest. Sure. I, I played in Houston with them last weekend. I don't think I'll do any extended touring with them, but I'll do like the weekend stuff with them. But, but they, they, they can't, they, they, they can't play with that. Can they play without you? They did. Yeah. They, they, did. Went, they went to Australia and, uh, uh, did a whole run down there with uh, this kid, Miles, Miles Dimitri Baker. Yeah, that, they, they brought him in. And that's and that's just how it goes. It's just how it goes. You know, yeah. I can't I can't have my cake and eat it too, Drew. There's, a, there's <laughs> only there's only one of me. Can't can't say, hey, we're not banging anymore, but I don't want you to bang anybody else. You know. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's not fair of me to tell well, them. Well, well, there's a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of cross pollination here with a yeah. lot of the bands and, and a lot of it comes down to availability. It, that's what it is. You know, it's at a point now that, you know, without Perry and Dean there, I, I'm struggling with it being violence or not, you know, mm. and um, Christian being such a violence fan that he was, you know, I, I'm just at a, I'm just teetering on, my feelings on that, you know, and, and continuing and what I'm going to be doing. And I think that, you know, I'm committed to some shows and then we'll see what happens after that type deal. That's mighty honest of you. Um, yeah. did, did, did I read somewhere that you, you guys, uh, that you were in some configuration, you backed Corey from living color 
on, on the boat or something? Yeah. Is that right? Yes. So I get asked to do this uh, ship rocked. Ship rocked. Uh, yeah, the cruise, which is super cool. We, I did it with Lamb of God the year before. And I think because of uh, the, it, you had to be vaccinated to be on it. So the capacity was really low that year, but it was still mm-hmm. a great time. But then this year, I get asked to be what they call stowaway. And they, they put on the show with all this, like an all star jam. And so you look, you, you play some, you play some covers and they give you a list to play and you're playing with a bunch of other dudes. And, uh, <laughs> And it's, you know, I've, I've got no experience doing that. But, and uh, so I get on the boat and there's a keyboard player. Well, he's a musician from Nashville. His name's Tyson Leslie. Amazing fucking musician, man. And he can play everything. He does the piano bars where he does, you know, Michael Jackson beat it. Or he'll do, he'll do Corey Stone Sour songs. But he'll do like beat it but then play the solo too on the keyboard and he just plays everything right and uh so i see him getting on the the bus over there he's like hey i'm doing this set with uh cory glover you know and i said well hey man i'm down to jam what if you're doing he's doing covers you know and sure so he's all, all right here's the list <laughs> so i'm like oh fuck and cory's down with it and uh so it's it's like creep by radiohead it's uh um uh, Cowboy, I'm a cowboy, you know, so yeah, whatever, one and dead or alive. But any, any living color stuff? No, in living, yeah, actually, we did one of his solo songs that I had, ah. made, which was pretty rocking. Okay. But we do Hotel California, which I've kind of played with one guitar, with one guitar, but he's playing on the keyboards too. So he's oh, okay. All right. And, and so yeah. I learned the solo. You got to learn, you got to play that solo the way the solo is played. Uh, absolutely. I'm sitting in my and that's that's the um excuse me that's the uh Don Felder solo right 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 <laughs> Don Felder so I'm sober these days I'm about eight months sober and so I'm not yep. in a party boat and so I have no problem just sitting in my my cabin learning the tunes but I want to get it I want to fucking get this get this right and yep. you know you're playing with Corey Glover for God's sakes you know and and yep. Tyson, Tyson's warning me um he's all hey be prepared to go. In any direction, it can go. He, we did Purple Rain, dude. It was awesome. Nice, nice. So, but he's all follow his lead, and he went into uh, burr, 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 burr. He, he went into uh, try a little tenderness, which I never played. But Tyson was just, I'm all, just give me a key. He's all, all right, you know, G major or whatever. So I'm just, <laughs> in the God, we're, we're in this like bird cage at the top of the stairs, and so three decks can see you. And so we're like in this nest in the middle and, ran, and there's a stairway. So Randy and his girl or Lisa Murray are right behind us rocking with us. And the Aranda guys are right there rocking with us. And, and so he's witnessing this all go down and me just kind of, all right, Tyson, where are we going? You know, and, and it was one of the best things, most amazing things that I've ever been a part of to watch. That's, that's great. Corey go off and to be a part of that and have him, you know, take a solo and me and Tyson going back and forth. And it was a special yeah. moment. That's awesome. You know, I've never been on one of those boat things. So, you know, that, that's sort of, I, I might have to, I, I got to, you know, and I always, you know, cause I'm up in New York city, you know, so yeah. it's, it, it's not like I'm in Florida or Cal, you know, it's sure. like I'm in New York city. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get on the boat. But so they, Lama, Lama God is putting out a, is doing a cruise and it's is like, that right? it's hate breed and God forbid. And, you know, <laughs> we pass it on. And where's that, where's that coming Island. out of? I think it's from Florida. Yeah, it might be from Florida. That 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 that, that, that sounds that sounds like a lot of fun. Hey, let me take a quick sponsor break, and, and let's come back and let's take some questions from around the world. Okay. All right, sounds good. All right, there you have it. New York Oracle Chronicles Live. Yo, get your questions ready. I see a lot of yo David Hunter. A lot of you guys uh, typing out questions. I'll try to find them. If not, please type out the questions again for Phil. Uh, this is the one, the only New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. And we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, the Texas Silver Rush, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, and Upstate Records. They are a New York-based DIY independent metal and hardcore label. Founded in 2017, they broke into the scene with their inaugural 26 band compilation in 2018. And since then, have churned out over 80 releases in their brief five-year history. In 2023, look for new releases by Mark Rizzo's new band, Revenge Beast, 
Call from Earth Crisis is Friar, Fury of Five, Angry Corpses, and a few more surprises are in the works. Check them out at www.upstaterecordsnewyork.com and use the code STONE10 for 10% off. That is S-T-O-N-E-1-0. Come on now, last but not least. Come on, Devin. This is DTFM Vinyl Distro. Looking for extreme music? DTFM Vinyl has got you. Located on 13th Ave in the jewel of North Dakota, Fargo, we have the state's best selection of punk, hardcore, metal, ska, oi, and more. Can't make it in? Shop online from anywhere in the country at www.dtfmvinyldistrict.com. DTFM Vinyl, where the policy still is and always will be death to false metal. Hey, a couple of events coming up. I'm coming up, so you better get this party started. That's right. Sunday, April 29th, a couple weeks from now, Black and Blue Show in the Park with Mad Ball, Murphy's Law, Crown of Thorns, Vulture Raid, and The Capturers. The day after that is one of our Back to the New York Hardcore Roots Series shows at the Barry Electric Free All Ages with Go, Crazy Eddie, Down Low, Crippled Earn, and Chum Huffer. Sunday, May 21st is... 21st is Rampage Fest 5. Two stages, seven bands, reaching out. Cropsy, the pride of Staten Island. Extinguish the code, Pink Mist, Sewage, Raid, and Disguised. A couple days after that, back in Tompkins Square Park, the New York Hardcore Chronicles proudly presents Leeway, Rebelmatic, Butterbrain, Winterwolf, and Scott Helen's Guitar Me of One. June 3rd, there is a Kings Never Die, All the Rats record release listening party at Generation Records. Come on now. You heard? Biohazard, Sheer Terror, Sworn Enemy, Fury of Five, Sub-Zero, and Incendiary Device. It's going to jump off tonight. Come early, stay late. Sunday, June 25th, it is my birthday bash along with Steve Zing from uh, Sam Hayden Danzig. We are celebrating together another free Barry Electric matinee. He is dusting off his band Morning Noise. First New York City show in 35 years. I'm dusting off the high and the mighty. Don Foos is coming down from, from Cleveland. Uh, One Life All In, Concrete Ties, and Chemical X. Sunday, July 30th at the Barry Electric, Free All Ages matinee. Dog Eat Dog, Kings Never Die, Dead Crew, Incendiary Device. It's going to jump off tonight. And Serial Poets. And last but not least in the long line, another free all-ages Sunday matinee on the Bowery with The Take, Silence Equals Death, Star Car with Sab Gray from Iron Cross, Ma'afa, and Mr. Pickle. First show in 10 years. So there's lots, lots going down. Just a reminder, please contribute to the show. There's also a uh, super chat function. If you have a question perhaps a burning desire, uh, do the super chat function, uh, donate for a couple bucks, donate to the show. Also, I got to say, uh, please, if you have a communication device, uh, follow me on Instagram, pick up, pick up the device right now, get on Instagram stone films, NYC for the latest on what's going on with the show. Also, there's a merch line. Uh, perhaps you want the New York hardcore chronicles mug or, uh, the do good thing is, or do Ed, uh, do good things and good things will come to your shirt. Also, if you're watching the show and rerun, there is a subscribe button right there. Subscribe to the show, please. Thank you, everybody that has supported the show and will continue to support the show. That said, um, here we go. Let's bring our – any any uh, questions you have for Phil? Post them up. Let's bring him back on. Hey, man. Let's see. Hey. Hey, let's see what we got. Um, all right. Aaron Gerard asks, how did you enjoy touring with Voivod early in your career? <laughs> they were they were interesting, man. Yeah? Yeah. It was Dimension Hatros tour, I think. And uh, the record was good. Um, they were French-Canadian, so they kind of kept to themselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, they took a lot of acid. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
they're an interesting the, – the, the shows were okay. Some were better, you know. It's kind of a bummer tour for us, but, you know, the dudes the dudes were really cool, and we enjoyed watching them. Right on. Uh, History of Roadrunner Records. Not sure who's behind this. Who's this? Uh, I don't know. Is it Borvoy? Monty Connor? <laughs> Who is it? I don't know. Uh, I'm contractually obligated to ask about the Roadrunner United show in December 2005. That was a good time. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, Adam was in the house band, so he was playing on a bunch of tunes. Rob was playing on a bunch of tunes. Uh, Dave didn't play. Uh, we went out to just take part as a Roadrunner band, and we were setting up the blackening at that point. And uh, then I got – I think Rob got me on um, – oh, it's the dude doing the documentary. Oh, got it. We got it. Then uh, Rob got me – uh, to jam uh, a simple tour song. I think it was, I forget. I think it's Refuse Re Resist, maybe that I played. Yeah. Uh, Scotty and Dino and, you know, a, a bunch of those dudes. So it was fun to be able to be, to take part in that sense. So Rob, Rob got me, uh, he got me on that song. Really right cool. Uh, good, fr good friend and supporter Jonathan Busky says, Drew Stone has made some killer music videos. <laughs> However, he can't stake a claim to the violence <laughs> world in a world video. Hard. Hard. <laughs> Hard. Yeah, it was a, that was, I think, our only video up until recently, Let the World yeah. Burn, we just did. But, you know, it was, it, was, it was a cool video. We had some notoriously insane shows in the Bay Area, and we strapped the helmet on the guy, the kid going in the pit, and – <laughs> Staying alive and stuff, so it was uh, it was good, man. Right on, right on. You know, I was gonna I was gonna ask this, so I'm glad Gary's asking about Debbie Abono. He says, uh, Phil, Debbie Abono played a huge part in the lives of young Bay Area thrash bands. Can you tell us how that all came about and what it was like touring with the quote unquote thrash metal mom? <laughs> I think Debbie's daughter, one of Debbie's daughters, was dating Larry from Possessed. And uh, Larry from Primus, who was in Possessed at the time. And I think that she was maybe in her 50s at the time, which is crazy. I'm 56 now. And to think that this is how old Debbie was at that point. Um, she began managing the band and was just such a such a cool person and social person and got to know a lot of people in the business. And she was just beloved and uh Every, I think at one point, all the band, barrier bands, uh, she managed Exodus. She managed, uh, started managing Forbidden. We asked her to manage violence. And uh, and she went on the road with the bands. So she would, you know, that meant that we, you know, we stayed in two rooms. There was four dudes in one room sharing, sharing beds. And me and Rob Flynn shared a bed. And Debbie was in the other bed. <laughs> and so we all we were in a van. Wow. 15 passenger van, luggage and gear in the back, drums on the roof. And, uh, and we get up, we go to Denny's and we ate together. Nobody got PDs, you know, she, she paid for our meals and she, she was probably out of pocket for tours, you know, but, right. uh, but we all ate together. We go to Denny's or Shoney's or whatever, you know, if we were on the East coast and, and she was a trooper, man. She's, you know, uh, she's sort of looked upon as like a beloved figure in, in, in that scene, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. She was, uh, she was real. And when she spoke, you listened, she was, you know, that respected and for good reason. She had great sound advice. She looked out for everybody. She wanted to, you know, take care of everybody. That was her. She's a very generous and giving person. Right on. Um, I think I would be a miss to not ask you about your relationship with Jackson. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's a beautiful guitar. Can, Thank you. Can, you. can you just kind of walk us through sort of your relationship with Jackson? Yeah, I, when I, uh, back in, back in 1990, I had a deal with them, uh, Charvel Jackson at the, at that time. And then I just kind of fell out of the music scene. And when I got back in, there was a guy at Jackson, his name was, uh, Brian McDonald, and he was a big violence fan. So uh, he reached out about getting me some guitars. And we also, I'm a, I'm a Philadelphia Phillies fan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so he was a huge Phillies fan. So we had this affinity for a couple of good things. And he, uh, he 
pushed and pushed for me to get a signature and I got, so what we ended up doing was, yeah, come on now. Here's the, uh, here is the, this is probably the most famous one. It's my Randy Rhodes tribute and, uh, the cutouts right here is kind of my design. And, uh, so I had this one polka dot, but it's got an unfinished neck on the back. And so at the same time I had this one, a lot of people don't know that Michael Shanker is my other dude. Mm. Recently pulled this one off. So it's a, it's a Michael Shanker tribute, but it's got the notches in it. Demolition style. This, and uh, Michael Shanker was coming through our town and I reached out to the promoter and I said, Hey, I've got a guitar. Do you think that I could get, Michael to sign it if I came to the you know sound check or something like that. So uh -huh. he puts me in touch. He puts me in touch with the tour manager, and the tour manager says, "Well, yeah, let me talk to Michael about maybe you getting up and jamming a song with him." You know, and I'm all, "What? <laughs> like, don't you fuck with me? Don't tease me. You better not." <laughs> so he, you know, he does, and Michael says, "Yeah, we'll play Doctor Doctor with me on stage or whatever like that." And so Michael's got a. My, Michael's got a rep about things maybe going south sometimes, and I kept waiting for it to go away, you know. And, and but sure enough, I got up and, and played a song with him. What'd you play? I, I played Doctor Doctor with him. Oh yeah. And cool. at the end of the song, I have a sharpie in my hand, and I whip out the guitar, and he he signs it on the back. Nice. Right there. Wow. So this is Rudy's. I got Rudolph to sign it too. We played with him in Wacken, but Michael signs it as he's he's wailing away on his guitar on this side, and then he's signing my guitar on this side. That's, That's fucking crazy. On my on my YouTube channel, the video of the whole thing. That's awesome. So yeah, and then we've we've moved on to uh, what you just saw was the Fury models, which are the yeah. which is this one. Yeah. So this what I'm selling now. It's called the Demolition Fury. This one has, you know, the fixed bridge, and uh, it's kind of they call it an destroyer. There you go, right there. Yeah. So it's like a, an Ibanez destroyer mixed with a Gibson Explorer, and uh, you know everybody at Jackson has a V now. So uh, I went. Yeah, Eddie to, Medina says I want one. <laughs> I went. I went for this. Yeah, they're nice. I mean, it's kind of rare. I mean, you, you, you've hung in there with them a long time now with Jackson. I mean, you know, usually guys jump, you know, from this to that, but you've been pretty solid with them. You know, one of the, the reasons why I was able to quit being a carpenter was because of my Jackson endorsements and and my quarterly checks. Once the checks started coming in, I was like, I was, hey, maybe I get a tank of gas out of something, you know, it's, you know, but but when they came in, it was like, this is real money. And good it's like, for you. Oh, holy crap. Good, it's, good for you. It's 2007. So that had a lot to do with me. I worked construction for um, most, yeah, most of my time with Machine Head. I, mm. I needed to uh, work construction. Yeah. Um, I know you mentioned uh, Shanker, but Morgan asks, who are some of your favorite, most influential guitar pay players? Any thoughts on uh, Petrucci? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Petrucci, he's a machine, man. He's yeah. really, he's really good. Um, I like him. I don't follow a lot of that style of music. Uh, I recently went, went and saw him in Portnoy. Did their tour together with their wives in the opening band. Mean Streak was out on tour. Do you remember Mean Streak from back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. So they, uh, so they were opening. It was kind of, it was cool for them all to be on tour with all their wives too. And right on. So Petrucci was killer and. But I'm a, uh, I'm kind of all over the map with my favorites. Uh, you know, there's there's Rhodes, there's Shanker, uh, there's George Lynch, um, Akira Takasagi from Loudness, Adrian Vandenberg. You know, wow, don't we don't hear his name much on here? Chris Oliva yeah. from Sabotage. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the the guys that are you know kind of. Right in Warren D. Martini, a lot of the hair metal guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. Warren D. Martini's great. Uh, Morgan also says, "Yo, I think I think I saw Phil and Mark Death Angel at the crowd at a John Petrucci show a couple months ago. Yeah, right. Is that right? That was a show. That was a show. Ah, there you go. So there you go. 
Yep, Mark showed up. I think Mark Mark did some pre-gaming. <laughs> Mark came in. I don't think he was prepared for a little prog show. I think he was ready to uh I think he was ready to rage a little more than I was. Yeah. I was get, you know, because that's got three kids at home, 930 hits, and I'm like, you know, the machines yeah. now. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. Are you still playing rec basketball in Dublin? <laughs> <laughs> No time for that, man. Yeah. No for that. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I've been doing a lot of golfing. Mm. So between, I'm in the midst of recording like three different records right now. And in between that and taking the kids to, to where they need to go, it's, it's been about golf. So mm. old guy sport. Um, I know you sort of addressed this, but David Hunter says, I've been a big fan for a long time, had to source nothing to gain from Canada as it wasn't available in Ireland. I love the EP. They said it would never happen. Another LP with violence seems <laughs> like the right thing to do. Much love from Ireland. Well, we sort of addressed that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah we'll see what, what happens more. I'm glad that you got the EP and I'm glad you dug it. Um, I'm not sure about anything in the future. There you go. Uh, I saw violence in 1990, says Paulie Porkchop's vids. In, at Sundance, oh my God, in yeah. Bay Shore, which is like a legendary venue out in Long yeah. Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Defiance opened. Any memories of Sundance? If it's so legendary, then what I have to say about it, it won't surprise you at all. So uh, people were throwing bottles, oh. and uh, there was a fight out in the parking lot. And <laughs> um it was a great show. I like that place. I like the bar was kind of in the back middle. And it was a, it was, that was Long Island, man. Yeah. 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 It was, it was a good show. I, I do remember that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm seeing one here that you're not bringing up for maybe reason, but I'll yeah. address. which if one I'm, I'm, I'm very, is it the one I'm looking at right now? Which one? The Michael Spriegel there at 202. Uh, 202. Spriegel. Let me go back. Hold. What time is what time does it say on? Two oh two, Michael. Oh oh oh, two oh two is your time. Yeah, so five oh two. Five oh two, my time. Hold on, let me see. Five oh two. Oh, the roof he's in. Nope. No. Right below it. Right oh yeah, I I I, I didn't <laughs> feel it was appropriate, but if you do, let's go for it. Can, can Phil talk about Kerry's guitar abilities as the world of guitarists seem to think he sucks? Kerry King is, is one of, you know, as far as metal goes, he's, he's amazing right hand. You know, his, his rhythms are so fucking good. And mm. say what you want about your leads because, you know, conventional, not conventional, there's some leads of his that are just memorable as fuck. And to his credit, he plays the same thing every time. Those are his leads. That's his language right. that he's speaking. Whether you whether you can understand it or not, you know. I I think the the lead in Warren song was fucking amazing. Mm. And so you know, I, he doesn't suck at all. He's fucking awesome guitar player. Right on. There you go. <laughs> Glaw 42 I caught the violence demo they tossed out at the Empire Rock Club in Philly back in 1988. <laughs> Put that shit on eBay and sell it, bro. <laughs> yeah, they gave us a bunch, and they, they had a thing going to where if you call the number uh, in the magazine, then they would send you a, a demo that we did. Oh, and we cool. had a bunch of them, and we were tossing them out. That Empire show in Philly was uh, the sweatiest, most drink show that I've ever done. I jumped on the monitor, and my feet – just slid down and I oh. just face first on the front row. Went, oh, <laughs> so nasty. Oh, geez. Awesome show. Love that Philly show. Good. Well, it's been fun. Yeah, it's man. Good. Yeah, it was great, man. It, it was, it was, it was really good. Yeah. Glad, and and, and, and I, I, I appreciate you circling back, you know, I owed you. <laughs> um, anybody you want to shout out? Anybody you want to thank? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, yo, I'm late. <laughs> uh, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. It's wrapping up, bro. Yeah. You're, 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 I guess. What's up, Chris Contos? Chris Contos, man. Love that guy. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. I think that, uh, um, 
What do I have coming up? Doing some Lama God shows in South America. Um, oh, you know what I wanted to ask you about that he didn't ask you about? Being that, you know, I have, a, I have a history of a bit of a heart condition. You know, in doing my homework, I saw that you passed out on stage a couple of times. That must have been scary. Yeah, that was uh, that was a while ago. It happened um, happened a few times. The first time was crazy. I had uh, we had um, uh, we were playing in Italy, and we playing a song called "This in the Shades of Night." That's off the Ashes record, and uh, it's my dad had been in kind of some declining health there was concerns about him I, we play the song and it's about dealing with death and you know we play it sometimes i think about him and and so during this song i pass out and i and it used to happen to me you know earlier in, in life and it hadn't do, happened do, 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 do you do, do you feel it coming do you see it yeah. coming yeah you feel it you get a little tunnel vision you get a little clammy hands oh. and so i woke up the next morning and was like you know called my parents because we'd been nominated for a Grammy. So I called my parents said, Hey, you know, your son's a Grammy nom, you know, <laughs> and uh, didn't hear back. And so I get a call when I wake up the next morning, cause we're nine hours ahead or whatever. And it's from my sister saying, Hey, you need to call home. And uh, so I, I have a feeling it is what I think it is. And sure enough, my father had passed away. Well, I'm sorry. So we're we're like, man, we're here in, in Zurich. What do we do? It's just like, I need to go home, but I can't, you know, I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll do the show tonight. <laughs> but then I need to fly home tomorrow. I'll be with my family and, and set up the arrangements and stuff. So Dave McLean was pretty adamant. And I didn't know why at the time. But like, hey, what time? What time did they find? What time did he die? Wow. And, uh, and it was, <laughs> he got out of dialysis. And he went to the parking lot and he set the keys on his dashboard and he just sat in his chair and he just, he just left. Wow. And so we're doing the math. It's like, okay, two o'clock, two fifteen. he gets out and we're like, Hey, that's right around the time we were playing to the shades. And that's right about the time you passed out. Wow. And some crazy way of him saying goodbye. And, you know, some, and it kind of spurned that the, those episodes happening for me again, maybe it was just the depression. And, you know, we went on tour right after that with, uh, with hell. Yeah. And we were playing six songs. So I'd get done playing and just start throwing them back and, mm. you know, and just, and partying. So I just went through a little depression. Do, 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 do you think your using had anything to do with that? I don't know. I, Cause it, yeah. it might've, I just, yeah. think that, you know, I think that it was depression, but the more of, I think it was just a broken heart, you know? Sure. It's, and we still we still feel it. Yeah. Um, his, it never goes away. His birthday's uh March 30th, 1933. So 33033. 33 was his lucky, you know, his lucky his lucky number. So, so he would have been he would have been 90. Yeah, it would have been 90. And my so dad's when, my dad's about to turn 90. Yeah. Oh crap. Yeah. So my sister's birthday is on the 20th of March. Mine's on April 2nd. And we so we celebrate our birthdays all together. So we just had a little celebration of him and it's, he's, he's always with us, man. I got him tattooed here on my arm. And, um, but the whole, we found out about the Grammy the day that, you know, we've, that my dad died. So it was that wow. every time the Grammys got brought up, it was, it was like, I was ready for it to just be over with. And when we went, Peter Frampton was announcing, and I thought we were going to win. You know, I really thought we were going to win. I thought we should have won. And I was mm. thinking about what am I going to say to Peter Frampton, you know? And, and we didn't. And then it was cool. It was fucking Slayer, you know? Yeah. So we. Yeah, right. It's, it's just like, it was a big weight. It's just like, okay, no more Grammy talk. We can get on with the healing and the. Yeah. Grammy and, you know, and, and move on from that. So, wow. but it, it hasn't happened in a while. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just the um, vasovagal syncope so my vasovagal nerve on my heart it mm. doesn't it does sometimes the adrenaline doesn't kick in when it needs mm. to i just need to lay down and reset and it's sure. you know, nothing they can really do about it hopefully hopefully it happens in a situation where you can lay down and reset yeah, right? yeah. And, and you're not you're not in front you're not at some european mega festival right for sure for sure yeah 
Well, thanks for sharing that, man. And, yeah, man. And we're really glad that you're okay. And of course, we wish you all the best. And thank you so much for today. It was it was really really enjoyable. And hopefully, you know, I, I when you come through town, I'll reach out, or maybe I'll see you out in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. If you're not in Milwaukee, I'll let you know when we roll through, and, and definitely connect when I can, man. I appreciate you having me on, and giving me this time, and I'm glad that it was able to happen. Pleasure was mine. Talk to you all soon, right. Phil. Talk to you soon. Right. Bye bye. Well, there you go. Great show. That was awesome. What a yeah, great show, right, Lori? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Paulie. Yeah. What a what a what a what a what a great guy. You know, we've been doing some great shows lately. Hey, Chris Contos, you still out there? Um, where is? Hold on. Where is my? Well, okay. What can I say? Uh, Moby's up next on Sunday. Uh, watch the film. It's really good. Um, and if you haven't heard, you now know, of course, that, God, Biohazard's doing the big matinee show. You know? Hey, you see that, Contos? Incendiary Device is opening up for Biohazard here in New York. The big banger, man. Big banger. And yo, Contos, we got to talk. Uh, we want to come out and play out west, man. I see you're booking that room. You know, thank you, John. It was good, man. It was it was a good, nice, nice guest, nice guy. Um, that said, uh, yeah, we'll 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 do it up. Uh, thank you, Eddie. Fucking Oakland, represent Bay Area, represent. Here you go. Um, what else? I think I think we I think I think we covered a lot. I think we had a great show. Um, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll see you on Sunday for uh, the return of Mr. Moby. Anything else? Yeah, we'll talk about it. Uh, the record, uh, the record just got mastered. Big announcement coming up, and we'll talk. We, we got to come out west and do a couple shows. Uh, so yeah, so we'll talk about it. So there you go, everybody, wherever you are. For me, do this for me, okay? Two good things and good things will come to you. Why?